Liverpool Surbiton Neighbourhood Committee. Um, I'd also like to um, introduce all the um, councillors and officers who are attending this meeting this evening. So if you can um, just, um, when I call your name, if you can just uh, <laughs> say good evening as well, that'd be great. Thank you. Um, so if I can start off um, with um, Councillor Shashila Abraham. Yes, good evening, everyone. I'm Councillor Sushila Abraham. I'm from the Berlin's Ward. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Sushila. Councillor Mark Bainan. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Councillor Sam Folder Hughes. Hello. Hi. Councillor Hilary Gander. Good evening. Councillor Liz Green. Good evening, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Anita Schaffer. Hello, good evening, Chair. Thank you. Councillor Malcolm Self. Good evening, everyone. Councillor Sharon Falchkov Sumner. Good evening. I'm the Green Party Councillor for Alexandra Ward. Good evening. Councillor John Sweeney. No, I saw him earlier, but maybe he's dropped out. I'll, I'll come back in a minute. Uh, Councillor Diane White. Good evening. Thank you. Councillor Jürgen, Jürgen Nathan. Good evening, Chair. Thank you. Um, I think we've got um, Alex Rosa Troikas. At... Good, no, evening. Good evening. Um, Eunice Hamad. Good evening, Chair. Good evening. James Geach from the neighbor, our neighbourhood manager. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thanks. Martin Newton, Newton, who's our democratic services officer. Good evening, everyone. Thank you. I think that's everybody. We've got some um, people who have uh, registered to speak as well this evening. I'll just say again, was um, Councillor John Sweeney here? No, I don't think he is. All right, then we'll just uh, carry on. Um, I just wanted to to start off with a, a few reminders, which we've had a few of these meetings now, so you probably um, know them. But um, first of all, just to make sure that your um, your mobile phones are switched off um, or on silent during the during the meeting. Uh, this and it just can uh, say again that the meeting is live on the council's YouTube channel, and we will uh, which will be available after the meeting. If we can try and keep our, our microphones off um, or on mute, um, unless you're speaking, because sometimes there's feedback. And, and if members are wishing to speak, if they could indicate in the chat function. Please, please don't use the chat function for just to put your name, well, just put your name in it, but not to, to put comments, because um, that, that's uh, something that we, needs to be um, seen by, by the public as well. So if you could just use it to, to put your name. So turning to, to the agenda, um, this evening, we've got the first item we've got on the agenda is public questions, and we've got uh, three people registered this evening to to speak. Um, we've got up to thirty minutes for this. Um, so, if I just want to um, introduce the the, the what well, the person that submitted their question first, and that is James Clark, who I think is here. James, would you like to? Yep, thank you. Yes, I'm here. Hello. Um, thank you, first of all, for the opportunity to ask a question. Um, by way of introduction, I'm a resident and director of businesses in King Charles Road. Um, and I want to talk about the, the modal filter in King Charles Road. Um, I've seen with my own eyes the positive impact of the modal filter. This has included reduced noise, reduced traffic, reduced rat running from people outside the area, increased pedestrian use, increased cycling, even when it's been wet and cold recently. And my car journey time to the A3 during the rush hour commute has not been affected at all. And all my neighbours are saying the same positive things. But rather than take my word for it or listen to a noise, noisy minority against it, will the councillors please confirm that the evaluation of the scheme's undoubted success will be carried out objectively and using data and other hard evidence, such as traffic volumes. Thank you. 
Um, thank, thank you, James. Well, well, I can um, I can pass over to our highways officer, Yunus Hamad, and uh, he might like to comment. I can also uh, make some comments as well, but I'll let Yunus um, say something first, um, and, and I'll follow it up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, uh, Chair, the Council will be reviewing the two traffic area using a combination of data sources. This will involve before and after traffic volume, traffic speed, then air quality data, as well as feedback received as a part of the experimental traffic management order, which process, and the public engagement. There will not be a threshold, which we can say it has or it hasn't been a success, but it will be based on the objective data collected. Hopefully, we are trying to publish and to send some data uh, in the last week of November. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Thank you, Eunice. Um, James, um, is that uh, a satisfactory answer for you? I mean, I, I think I probably would just say that um, myself um, and uh, my co-chair, Anita Shaper, and, and um, my fellow ward councillor, um, Hilary Gander have actually spent some time down at the the location um, and have listened to a variety of of, of um, comments from from residents and 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 as I have to say there are um, people who've got different views um, and we haven't been encouraging them to um, register that on the portal on the, the the website so that we can pull together all the data that we we have um, that that's so that's the, the the data that the highways are collecting plus also the, the data from our residents and and we will be using that as a as a, a in order to make a decision at at the end and 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 we may well look at the data and and bring it back to Surbiton neighborhood at, at some point once we think we've got enough information um in, with which to do that does that um answer your question um, yeah okay thank you i think that the, the key question for me is that it's based on an objective assessment of of outcomes such as reduced traffic volume um, particularly on King Charles Road, which has got a problem with speeding traffic and volume of traffic, particularly as rat runners, as they used to be. Mm -hmm. And subjectively, we can see that that's now reduced. Um, I'm pretty certain that objectively using data, which I'm pleased to hear that we'll get something at the end of November, I'm pretty convinced that that will show it. So I'm looking forward to seeing what it shows. Okay, thank you. I've got a um, councillor self, you would like to, to make a comment? Uh, thank you, Chair. Yes. Um Sorry, I, I've forgotten the question's name, but anyway. It's uh, James Clark. It's James, James. Sorry, hi, hi James. Um, I think you asked a specific question, which I think was more directed to members, i.e. councillors, as to, I think your specific question was, would we look at, when we come to make a decision on this eventually, would we look at the data objectively rather than just look at, the petitions that have so far been handed in and I can say I do take notice of petitions because uh, they do carry weight in my mind so I would I would take note of the petition that's ongoing against, against if you like the LTN um, but when I come to make to vote at committee and I, I've only got one vote obviously amongst 12 of us I can for my part I can assure you that I will look at the data and look at it as ob objectively as I possibly can. And I always would do with this sort of thing. Um, so I wouldn't just look at, see, uh, if you like, who's making the most noise. I would want to analyze the data, drill down into it, and see the, the uh, results of what's happening, both in King Charles Road, what's happening to traffic. Is there increased traffic somewhere else, like Rayburn Avenue? I'm not saying there is or there isn't, but I would want to see the evidence, yeah. So if that, if that, answered your question thank you Jay. okay uh, thank thank you um I, i've also got um and sir sharon sumner would you would like to make if we could just um we a quick comment um just because i've got some other people who want to ask questions we've got 30 minutes as you'll appreciate so thank you uh, thank you, Chair, and I will be very brief. Um, as one of the ward councillors where the low traffic neighbourhood barrier sits, it sits half in, in Alexandra Ward, um, of course, I will be looking very keenly at the data um, as, a, as a Green Party councillor. I support low traffic neighbourhoods in principles completely, and you have my, my hand on heart, honest pledge that I will look at all of the data that's presented to me. 
Thank you. So if we can um, just move on to, to the next question. It's um, from uh, Christopher Meekin. You, would you like to? Oh, ha hello. Yes. Can, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, uh, my question is about cleaning of the uh, street drains, because at the moment, in the last few years, in Surbiton Hill, the drains are regularly blocking with with leaves, which causes big puddles, and drivers just go straight through them, and to be emotional mums with their push chairs, and the rest of us get soaked. So uh, what has happened to the regular um, uh, street drain cleaning? It used to be done quite often but hasn't happened for several years now okay uh, I, again I, I probably would say that I, I think it the, there is some some sometimes some issues where there is perhaps cars parked and things and they don't um get to 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 actually get to the drains which is uh, sometimes the issue um but I, I I don't know Eunice can you answer this question or, or we can take it away and and certainly we'll follow it up and ask for the drains to be cleared in in your in your road I mean, uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm happy to answer some of it, but uh, let me explain to you. I have already sent the question to the to my colleague in the environment in order to look into this issue. But as far as I'm aware, the regime, it hasn't been cancelled. We still provide such a service. But as you said, sometimes if there is issues like that, uh, we ask the resident to contact us because sometimes there is leaves and there is some time with impacting more. So it's good if they contact the uh, environmental services and we be, will do an extra uh, visit in order to clean the gully. If we couldn't clean it, there was a car parked and there is an issue there. So, but anyway, I've already sent a copy of the question to the team. And I'm hopefully, if the gentleman can leave his email address, we can write to him and let him know. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yes, I, I, we do, we do have the details, and um, and I will certainly make sure that's followed up. Um, you, you're I, I am the ward councillor for you, for for your the street that you you live in. Um, so I, I will make sure that that's that's followed up, and 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 um, back and assure you that they, they do uh, they are doing the drains. Um, we we um and and I, I think actually is just about to to start the the leafing program. Um, collection of leaves is just about to to commence as well. I'm not sure of exact date, but I I believe it is. So so we will follow. Up. So th thank you very much for your your question. I can thank, you thank you. Um, so if I could just move on to our, our third registered speaker, which is Leo. You, Leo, would you like to? Hi, this is Leo. Your... Yes, can you hear me? I can. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, councillors. Actually, you've stolen my thunder in the way, and you've answered some of the questions. What I was going to say is, when is the plant for obstruction? King Charles Road, Beaconsfield Road, going to be removed. Now, it's the first time I've heard somebody speaking positively about it, the gentleman that was on earlier. What I have noticed, and I use the Berryland Road into your road on foot by bus in the car, there is more traffic now at that crossroad with King Charles Road and Berryland Road by the shops. That can sometimes be very awkward for the buses. There's that little extra traffic. And, of course, there's more traffic on Hollyfield Road. And especially Hollyfield Road, getting out onto the Yule Road, whether you're going left or, God forbid, you try and go right. I wouldn't recommend that on anybody. But if you're going left, can be tricky. And you've got to be aware of traffic sometimes shoots down on the inside very fast. I'm worried that there's going to be an accident there because of people getting impatient coming out of Hollyfield Road. All you've done is you reduce the pollution, shall we say, in one small area, but moved it to other areas. I personally cannot see the point. I've used King Charles Road for, what, 60-odd years? My car? I used to use it as a cut-through going from Epsom to my mother at Kingston Hill, but years ago. Yes, in those days, there used to be a lot more traffic on it. Before this planter went in, the traffic on King Charles Road had greatly been reduced. There is not, there wasn't much traffic. 
a lot of people won't tackle that iron bridge. And that's the next point. When are we going to get something done about that? So if, it, if anybody, if any of the councillors want to comment on what I've just said, yeah, um, and there's just one other additional yeah. question, so I give it to you now. Well, well, why don't we um, just do, deal with that one just now, and then we've I think we've got some time that we can go back. I've actually just realised, um, uh, Shashila, were you trying to um, ask a question on this, or was it on the previous one for the, uh, or make a comment on the? I was actually for the previous one. I was just about to write to you to say, "Are you looking at the chat function?" Yes, no, no, I am. I am. Sorry, I've just seen. seen uh, it's, yeah, it's so. what Mr. Matt was saying. I just want to add, um, Madam Chair, that um, the drain cleaning functions are happening because I know I've raised it with uh, on Raven Avenue and on Manor Crescent, and it is actually taking place. They have sort of a cyclical uh, timing and timetable for these. Uh, and they are doing the leafing, I know, is being, has been started already, and they are doing it. But unfortunately, we've had very bad winds, and more leaves are falling now. Uh, from this evening, you can see it's quite bad. The roads are quite bad with lots and lots of leaves, yeah. uh, and it is slippery. And while on that subject, maybe, Madam Chair, you want to take this away. On the corner of Hollyfield Road, but it meets up King Charles Road, it's very slippery where the fish ponds is that, that, uh, that bend. Uh, I've seen people slip, so it's very slippery because there are lots of these small leaves are there and it's piling up. I just thought okay. I'd address yeah. that with you now so that you could uh, take that away on the subject. Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that's on the list of the leafing. But if we can just go back to to um, to the, the question. So I think, um, Hil Hilary, uh, Councillor Gander, would you like to um, say something? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, sorry, my... Um, my internet cut out just briefly so i, I didn't hear uh, exactly where um, mr delito was saying that there was extra traffic apart from Holyfield road but uh, i think what what i heard um was at the end of uh, king charles road um possibly um i'm not sure around there um and if, if you could, if you could just repeat it, please, Mr. Delito. Yes. yes. Where, where is there more traffic? I, as I say, I've used that road for many years, and I live around the corner now. Mm -hmm. The traffic has reduced well, in Charles Road. There's no doubt. About yes. It. But Holyfield Road has got more. Where, where else were you saying and, has got more? There's more traffic now going where the shops are in Berryland Road Junction of King Charles Road, where the um, Liberal headquarters is. Ah, yes, Fairlands Road. Those okay. There and uh, and that, that junction, that has definitely got busier. Okay. It's, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, going, I, you know, we used to say talk about number eleven buses coming in threes. Nowadays, traffic seems to come at a dozen at a time, and then there's a big gap. Yeah. We seem to yes, get a lot of that. I've noticed, and particularly in Hollyfield Road, getting out on yeah. your road you get that sort of situation if there's not much traffic it's easy enough to handle that junction but if there is you begin to get impatient and i know yeah. when i went to the pr exercise you had there um one of the guys from the flats there next to the electricity board place were saying that they're noticing now cars stacked up in a in a queue trying to get out onto the main road. So the pollution that was at King Charles Road, Beaconsfield Road, has now gone to outside them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's my... And, okay. Opinion. Yeah, and, and yeah, so just to, to, to come back... To, when the time comes yeah. for this yeah. report. Yes. Absolutely. So you'll have heard the answer to the, the previous question. Yeah, um, and and we will be taking all this uh, these reports all this feedback uh, into into account um, we'll also be doing measuring and monitoring of all the different roads that um, are potentially impacted such as Hollyfield Road such as Maryland Maryland so we will we'll be measuring that against how it was before yeah. um, because th these are all valid um, points that we need to consider um, and I don't know whether you've fed back directly yourself. I mean, I would certainly encourage you to do so. It's it's 
obviously we're listening to you and that that is a kind of feedback but it's important to if you can to write in um it, there is a consultation open um which you can you can get to on the internet um via kingston let's talk i, I don't know whether you're aware of that kingston let's talk we can send you email of how to do that i'll look at um, yeah. okay great uh, i mean I, I don't know do we have your email in which case we could send you uh, the link. I'll send it to my three councillors. Councillor Brilliant. Good April, idea. Sweeney, yeah. wherever he is, and uh, that's it. I think yeah. it's your, you're not one. I send yeah. it to all three. Yeah. So and then just April. just very very briefly, um, we we are aiming to protect a, a residential area. It's quite a wide residential area um, from traffic that's. Um, uh, possibly speeding and and possibly uh, most definitely creating some air quality problems because we want to encourage more people to walk and cycle that's the main aim oh, i understand all that of course another factor that's come in since covid we've got these bikes running around all over the place now i'm in a 20 mile an hour area outside the school entrance I don't think anybody keeps the 20 miles an hour along Manor Drive. And they go faster down Manor Drive than they'll ever go down King Charles Road. Mm. I think one guy went through past me this, this morning. He must have been doing 60 at least. They see a piece of open road, no cars parked. Yes. Really. We haven't seen that for a long time. No, there's... there's that, a, that is a concern. A, yeah. Grocery delivery lorries all over the place. I guarantee you, my walk to the bus stop is about 300 yards. I'll see either a motorbike or a grocery delivery lorry. So there is a lot of activity in this area. Mm. Yeah. So, okay, thank you. Thank, thank you. Well, there was actually your second bit, your second yeah, bit to your question. Would, would you want to ask that now? Uh, you may not be able to answer. Uh, is it still the council's intention to go ahead with a 20 mile an hour limit over the whole borough? And um, when will we get some sort of update, if it is, as to what the progress is? Um, um, I, I was just going to look at um, you, 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 in the officer again, Eunice. Uh, Eunice probably answered that question. Uh, Eunice, would yeah, you like to, sure. to answer yeah. to that, where yeah. we are with the 20 miles an hour? And I, I don't yeah, know. Absolutely. As all of you are aware, uh, I don't know if you were aware, uh, after we consult the resident borough-wide on the introduction of 20 mile per hour, we were supposed to bring a report to the March 2020 outlining the result of this recommendation and ask for it. But unfortunately, with the pandemic, so we had to postpone that. And uh, now because TFL as well, they stop our local implementation plan budget at that time. But now I'm pleased to say we have some money from TFL, from the local implementation plan. And officers will be working with the portfolio holder and with the members as well on setting priority how mm -hmm. we want to spend this allocation which has been given. And as far as I'm aware, 20 mile per hour, it is for this administration, they would like to move forward with it as quickly as possible. So I hope we, you will hear from us soon. Thank you. Very good. Yes, I do appreciate it's a long drawn out process. I'm uh, speaking to somebody that lives in Ealing Borough, which have done it. And it said it took them a very long time. Thank you very much, Councillor. Okay. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gander, do you want to make a comment on now or, or you put it in the chat? Yes, I, I, I was just going to, to say pretty much what uh, Eunice has said, um, that it is still very much on the table. Um, we had our money taken away from us. We've now had some of it given back. Um, so, yeah, we're looking at everything again in the round um, and all the different things that we want to do. Um, but um, 20 miles an hour is um, is something that, as an administration, we are very keen on. Okay, thank, thank you. 
So I think that um, we've just uh, finished uh, all the, the questions. So thank, thank you very much for each of the questions. Uh, I think some of it has been answered um, as a, a you know, while we're here, um, but some of it requires follow up. So just I will make sure that that, that happens uh, after the meeting. So thank you. You can you can stay on um, if you, you like, um, but I would just ask you um, not not to um, not to to contribute and, and uh, to to any further uh, proceedings. Uh, but you can you're welcome to stay on or to go off and, and to, to watch it on um, the rest of the meeting on on the, the YouTube channel. That so we just Thank you. <laughs> um, so if we just move on to, to the next item on the agenda, which is apologies for absence. Martin, I'm not sure if um, I, I did do a, a roll call at the beginning and, and, and Councillor Sweeney didn't answer. So I, but I, I'm, I'm not sure if he's got his um, if he's come back on again. Uh, I, I believe he may be in a meeting by telephone, Chair. If yeah. Councillor Sweeney is in a meeting by telephone, if you can just confirm that. can't hear anything no, it doesn't, unless, doesn't look like it. Unless, unless he's on mute no I don't think so um okay so he's not he's not at the meeting so I'd um okay. I, I know that he did um he did he did um he did come in um at one point so so um hopefully he'll be able to, to duck, dial dial in at oh can you search yeah I've just seen a message from Council Sweeney actually he is online he just he, said Oh, he is online. So, All right, so uh, he's here. I don't know. I just seen a message. Okay, no, that's fine. That's that's great. Um, thank you. Um, he lost so, his broadband. Right, but as long as he's on, um, he on, so on, or... on, on, yeah. Okay. I know he just lost his broadband. Yeah. So he's not yeah, on just, the meeting. Just, just to confirm, chair. Um, when we get to the planning application item, Councillor Sweeney could take part if he can hear and and be heard at the meeting. Um, the the video connection isn't crucial, but it does need to be obviously within the meeting to still take part in that item and, and, and vote at the end of it. Yeah. All right. That's fine. Thank you um, for that update. So so we don't have any apologies um, for absence. Then um, we can move on to declaration of interest. Is there any anything that any anyone would like to to raise now? I've seen um, D Diane. Have you? put your in the chat yes thank you very much um just my usual one um we're talking about community grants um at item seven which is voluntary sector and i work in the voluntary sector i'm not connected with any of the applications tonight but just to raise that thank you okay thank thank you very much um and so then we move on to item four meet, uh, minutes of the previous meeting and um have we got um are we all uh, happy with that or if you want to put in the chat if there's anything that you would like to say um i'll give you a minute to to look nope, nothing's coming up so so i'll take it that we are agreed um with the, with the minutes and I'll, I'll sign them sign them later um, item five is uh, petitions, and and we haven't actually received any petitions, so so there's um, the no, no item there. Um, the next item um, we've got is um, the planning application item six um, on appendix A. Um, so I suppose this is the point where I think I've, it looks like we've got somebody, Martin, we've dialed in twice um, and a telephone number. So I'm not sure if that. Um, is that is Councillor Sweeney um, or not, or if it's someone else? I, I I think looking at the number it could be, um, but he doesn't seem to be responding at the moment. Okay, so so we don't know whether he is actually able to hear the proceedings, though. I think he's said that. Have you had notification that he's? He can actually, he's actually called in. Yeah, yes, yeah, sure. I think he was listening on, on his telephone. Um, yeah. But in terms of taking part in this item, he would need to be within the meeting and, and be able to hear and also, uh, you know, be able to articulate that he's, yeah. he's able to speak um, during the meeting itself. Madam okay. Chair, Madam Chair, I've just had a note to say, 
um, from Councillor Sweeney. I've lost my broadband and um, I can hear you, but can't, but you can't hear me. Right. Uh, Hi there. This the is Councillor Sweeney, by the way. I hope oh. you can hear me now. <laughs> well, we, we can actually. That's 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 good. That's the, because it's, it was the same number was coming up twice, and I just wondered if it was was you or not. So that's good. You you can hear the the proceedings. All right. But, so we'll move on to to the the, the planning application then. Um, appendix um, on Appendix A. Um, I've got um, the um, where I've, I've got my. Um, application here so the application um we have before us is, is one uh, sunray avenue tollworth um, the recommendation on this application is to permit the application subject to the conditions and informative set out in the report i i formally move the motion from the chair that, uh, at this point um so that it can be voted at the conclusion of the committee's discussion is is that motion seconded by anyone yes happy to second chair okay th thank you uh, Councillor Sheeper. Um, so I could just now um, ask um, Alex Rosser to to present this uh, planning application. Thank you, Chair. If you could just um, confirm when the visuals have come through. It's, it's there now. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to repeat, um, the application for consideration this evening is for number one Sunray Avenue, Tolworth, and that involves the subdivision of the existing plot and the erection of two semi-detached two-storey dwellings with associated parking, landscaping and amenity. If I could begin the presentation with some contextual aerial photographs. You can see the application site is here to the rear of number one Sunray Avenue and also um, borders Barnsbury Lane. Here is another view, a bird's eye view showing the vacant area of land. And here is a aerial plan showing the site boundary in red and here we have the two proposed dwellings plot one to the north and plot two to the south and here we have some contextual photographs this is a view eastwards towards number one sunray avenue and the application to the rear behind this fencing here is a view looking westwards towards the site from the alleyway which separates the properties along Vincent Avenue to the rear and Sunray Avenue. And here we've got Tolworth Tower in the background. And here you can see over the top of the fence which fronts Barnsbury Lane here. And as you can see, it's um, a vacant site. And here we have number one Sunray Avenue in the background. Here's a view northeast of the same area to the rear. And here's a summary of the proposed development. So we have one two bedroom dwelling and one three bedroom dwelling. Both dwellings meet or exceed the minimum floor space requirements set out in the London plan, as well as meeting the uh, floor to ceiling requirements. We have a density that broadly conforms with the London plan density range, but slightly exceeds on the habitable rooms per hectare. Total number of car parking spaces proposed is two, one for each dwelling. And we have four cycle spaces in total, two for each dwelling provided in dedicated cycle stores. And we have a proposed a private amenity space, a private garden for each dwelling which exceeds the minimum requirements. If I could move on to some proposed plans, here we have the front elevation or the northwest elevation showing that the maximum height of the development will be eight metres. Here we have plot one, the two bedroom dwelling, and here we have plot two, 
which would be the three bedroom dwelling. Here we have views of the side elevations showing that there are no windows on the first floor facing the rear and the properties on Sunray Avenue. And here's a view of the rear of the development where you can see the maximum heights again. Um, and here we have the obscured glazing at first floor level, which is a darker shade of blue. Just going back to the materials, you can see that the materials are in keeping with the surrounding properties. We have render at ground floor level and hanging tiles, a hipped roof, which is very characteristic of, of the local vernacular. And here we have a street scene where you can see the properties on Sunray Avenue and their maximum heights and those on Vincent Avenue to the rear and both properties on Vincent Avenue and Sunray Avenue exceed the height of the proposed development here which is a maximum of eight meters. You can also see the separation distances between the properties on both streets. Here's a proposed site plan where you can see the dwellings in more detail from the aerial view. So you have plot one here to the north, as I said, the two bedroom dwelling and plot two to the south, which is the three bedroom dwelling. And we would have two crossovers proposed on Barnsbury Lane here and here leading to a car parking space for plot two and a car parking space here for plot one. Here we have um, bin storage and cycle storage. Cycle storage for plot one is in the rear garden. And as you can see, despite the irregular shape of the gardens to the rear, they are quite generous. And as I said previously, exceed the minimum requirements. Here we have some CGI's to help you visualize the proposed development. So here is the existing lane that separates the proposal from Vincent Avenue and is the view from Barnsbury Lane. And here we are looking west along Barnsbury Lane. And a couple more visuals for you. This would be the view northwest from the alleyway to the rear of the site. And here I have a plan which shows the separation distances between the nearest dwellings. So here we have 7.6 to the properties to the rear on Vincent Avenue and a minimum of 7.3 to number one Sunray Avenue. Here we have some floor plans starting off with the ground which show the lounge and kitchen accommodation predominantly at ground and then the bedroom and bathroom accommodation on the first floor. And as you can see on the roof plan, we have some sustainability features, including the photovoltaic cells. And I'm advised that air source heat pumps will be proposed as part of the development. So just to finalise, the recommendation is to approve subject to the conditions as set out in the officer's report and agenda papers and the applicant entering into a legal agreement to restrict the owners and occupiers of the proposed dwellings from applying for on-street car parking permits in the event that the area is designated within a controlled parking zone in the future and to delegate to the head of development management any consequent changes to conditions and legal agreements. I should also point out at this stage that the applicant has volunteered to um, address the concerns raised by the Kingston Centre for Independent Living in which they queried some of the M42 accessibility criteria of the development and the applicant has committed to meeting those requirements by way of a section 73 in future. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. 
Um, we've got um, two registered objectors, um, which I think we've got um, there in the meeting. Um, if we could uh, go first to, uh, uh, well, I just thought about you doing it together. You've got five minutes, so I'm not quite sure whether it's separately or you, you, so you've only you've got five minutes in total. So I don't know. I've got the first person is Paul Martin. Um, do, do you want to go first? Or? Actually, I'll let Linda go first if that's okay. All right. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> and you, whatever way I did it, it was going to be the other way, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so anyway, we we can start the um, Linda. If you want to start, then um, for the, the, the but we've got in total five minutes, and and we'll give you uh, a minute's notice. OK, thank you. Uh, well, good evening and thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you. My name is Linda and I live at 3 Sunray Avenue and have lived here for 38 years. My main objection to this application is the severe impact I feel that it will have on my ability to turn and access in and out of my garage in normal times. I appreciate we can't remember normal times, but in normal times, my car is reused frequently. And the apparent extension of the garden line of number one to provide a rear gate will be very restricting on my being able to turn in and out of my garage, which has just had a new roof. I feel that parking for the new houses would will be dangerous as they will have to either reverse onto or off of Barnsbury Lane. Opposite a width restriction, which was put there for safety, and on a bus route. Lots of children walking past to go to the nearby school. Timber bin storage and cycle storage does not make a silk purse out of a sow's ear. And I believe that this whole proposal is a total overdevelopment of a back garden, resulting in houses very close to my conservatory and garden. With all the proposed development going on nearby in Tolworth, we do not need another two houses squeezed into someone's back garden. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Very succinct, Linda. Um, I, I, just, just so you're aware, I am the chair of the Sunray and Egmont Community Residents Association. So the feedback I'm giving today is is part of that that we gathered from all the residents around. Um, and you would have seen our objections in the original uh, form as well. Um, just to reiterate what, what Linda's saying, um, we are encouraging as many residents as we can to use the garages and to actually use the alleyways. Um, and if if they uh, if you extend the fences, you actually stop people's ability to use their garage, uh, which is actually quite important. But the the safety of the pedestrians and other vehicles and buses on Barnsbury Lane, as you would have seen in the uh, in the, in the pictures shown, um, the road does actually narrow exactly outside the proposed development, and there are solid metal poles in there to protect pedestrians, and they're going to have to be taken out in order to um, to put the driveways in. And that's a very serious safety concern. Um, they wouldn't be there, obviously, if they weren't needed, and they are. Um, the other the other issue is obviously overdevelopment of a back garden. It is a back garden, and the pictures make it look really big, but actually it isn't that big. Um, and we have a huge parking problem around the, the estate already, um, which will just get added to. The property, yes, you know, it, it is rendered and it does have tiles hanging off of the front, but that's where the that's where it stops looking like anything in Sunray Avenue or indeed the Sunray Estate. If you've actually wandered around or you've looked at some of the other pictures, it doesn't look anything like a Sunray house, um, apart from the fact that it's got tiles on the front. That's where it stops. Uh, it's one of the first houses that you'll see when you come onto the estate because Barnsbury Lane is, is the main access route. Um, and it's completely incongruous with the rest of the uh, rest of the estate. That said, we do appreciate the need for for houses to be developed. Um, and while we would much rather this this planning be um, rejected, if, we do have to, uh, if you do have to approve it, can we at least get a legal covenant in for the deeds so that they look after the alleyways? 
make sure that the fence is is properly dog legged so Linda can access the alleyway uh, and ensure that the construction face does not block the alleyway or leave any rubbish in the alleyway at all. Thank you very much. I think I've got 30 seconds left. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much um, and uh, good good timing. <laughs> right, um, I've also got, um, I think we've got um, two, uh, an app the applicant, we've got uh, two, two people, Jenny Best and Joseph Kent, uh, are they in the meeting? Hi. Oh, I can, Joseph hi, Kent, yes, yeah. I can, I can see now, yes, I can see you, that's, um, so who, who wants to go, the, the two of you, who wants to go first? Uh, it will be Jenny Best going first. Right, all right then, welcome, would you like to, you've got your five, but between you, you've got five minutes to, 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 um, to make, um, your representations. Uh, good evening, Chair and members of the committee. Thank you for offering myself and my architect the opportunity to speak today. My name is Jenny Best and my husband and I are the occupants of One Summary Avenue. Roughly five years ago, the council offered assistance to renovate the property, which had been in a state of disrepair. During the refurbishment, a new fence was erected, which subdivided the existing amenity space and gave us a smaller, more manageable garden. Since then, however, the larger garden area has been a challenge to maintain. In its neglect, the garden became unkept and the former garage was illegally occupied for a time. The proposal before you today offers a much better use of the land by providing two new homes, which my architect has designed to satisfy local planning policy with help from various consultants, including a daylight surveyor, energy consultant, SUDS engineer and landscape architect. The scheme improves biodiversity on the site and we will maintain mutual privacy between the new houses and surrounding gardens by means of a two metre tall fence and appropriately sized trees along the boundaries. We have also offered to restrict future occupants from applying for parking permits because our neighbours have expressed concerns about on-street parking. The application has been recommended for approval by the planning officer. Therefore, we hope you are minded to support their recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Joseph Kent and I represent Amasea Architects Limited. The proposal follows pre-application advice received 13th of May and makes best use of an underutilised parcel of land by providing two and three bedroom semi-detached dwellings, thereby meeting the need for more family housing in the borough. Gross internal area complies with a nationally described space standard and the overall density of the site satisfies London plan guidelines. The appearance of the dwellings is traditional and reflects the scale, materials and architectural features of surrounding properties. With regard to separation distances and private amenity, Kingston's residential SPD requires a minimum garden depth of 7.5 metres as measured from a habitable room window to the boundary of neighbouring properties and a minimum garden size of 50 metres squared per family house. Plot one has a garden depth of 8.17 metres and an amenity space provision of 57 metres squared. And plot two has a garden depth of 7.5 metres and an amenity space provision of 91.3 metres squared. The host dwelling also retains a garden depth of 7.5 metres, equating to 54.7 metres squared of private amenity. Where parts of each dwelling are closer than 7.5 metres to the shared boundary, the first floor windows are obscure glazed, thick shut and serving non-habitable rooms. At ground level, mutual privacy is achieved by erecting a two metre tall close border fence along the boundaries, supplemented by new tree planting. Since the development is sited at an oblique angle to the gardens of Sunray Avenue, the windows are largely orientated towards the garages and alleyway to the east. Therefore, there is no unacceptable overlooking onto neighbouring plots. A supporting daylight assessment confirms the development fully complies with BRE guidelines and there will be no adverse impact on surrounding dwellings or their gardens in terms of overshadowing. Sustainability is key in our design, therefore we are proposing photovoltaic panels on the rooftop and air source heat pumps to supply heating and hot water. There will be no gas cookers or boilers. These measures provide a 48% reduction in carbon emission against the level required by building regulation, which exceeds a 35% reduction required under local planning policy. Parking spaces will be fitted with electric charging points and each dwelling has secure cycle storage to encourage sustainable travel. Where car usage is required, driveways and drop curves are called a vehicle crossover policy. 
There has been no objection by the highways officer. In our commitment to transparency, I can confirm we were made aware of concerns surrounding accessibility upon release of the officer's report last week, which we have since addressed in our latest revisions. Regrettably, we were informed these cannot be presented tonight as late material, owing to the period of additional consultation required to review the amended drawings. We therefore hope the committee will allow us to submit and implement these changes under pre-commencement condition, thereby ensuring the proposal is fully compliant with building regulations. To conclude, I would like to thank William Flaherty and the planning team for their recommendation to approve, and I trust the committee will show their support accordingly. Okay, uh, th thank you very much. Um, we we'll now move on to um, questions from the committee. I've um, got um, Councillor Sumner, you would like to, we've got um, to go on to where we go start with the um, members' questions to, to the objectors. So would you like to, to go ahead with your question to, the, to them? Thanks. Thank you, and it's lovely to see Linda and um, obviously Martin as well. Thank you for your presentation. Um, I would just like to ask a question regarding consultation. And I, I know it's always difficult when you've got neighbours actually um, all, not pitted against each other, but with different priorities. Can you confirm to me what, what level of consultation has happened locally with, by the um, architect, please? Um. So was that was that for us, Sharon? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. It's for uh, to, to to either your, yourself or Linda. Yes. Yeah, for sure. So um, the architects did send an email to the um, the, the association um, a couple of days before they um, submitted the uh, planning application to the council, uh, which we then sent around to uh, our various social groups and asked for feedback. Um, I had a couple of email conversations with them as well um, just to clarify a few things that, that were asked by the community uh, and most of them you know were, were non-consequential things um, which they were able to, to clarify very easily uh, the route, the height of the roof was one of them um, and then obviously we uh, we submitted the uh, the response when the planning application came in okay thank you um i've also got um Councillor Bainan, would you like to um, ask a question of the objectors? Yeah, <clears throat> thank you, Chair. Um, so uh, it's for uh, Paul and Janine. I, I know you, you said um, you, yeah, you're concerned this might stop people using the garage or using the, the um, yeah, well, I think you said using the garages. So I was wondering why that, I understand about the issue with Linda, you mentioned about your you know, parking issue, and I understand that, just by how this might affect people using their garages. And what you meant by that, thank you. Sure. Is that, it's, it's more to this particular development, if they extend the fence out, it will stop. Um, it, it'll mean that Linda won't be able to use her garage easily because you can't get a car around that, um, that sharp corner on the fence. If, if you walk down the alleyways in the Sunray Estate, you'll see pretty much every single fence is, is dog-legged or, or angled to make sure that everyone can has, has got enough of an angle to get their cars out. In the current plans, um, it's, it's a straight fence all the way along. As you saw in the picture earlier on, there's actually a slight dog-leg in that fence. Uh, where you saw the picture of the parrot, the, the lovely street art parrot, there's a dog-leg there, and that's the bit that enables Linda to get out. Um, and we certainly don't want to be encouraging everyone around the estate to straighten up their fences because then no one would be able to use their garages. Okay, understood. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And are any other members like to um, have any uh, questions of the, the objectors? No. No. I, I can ask another question while we've got some time. Um, if, if that's okay, Chair. Yeah, no, yeah, you, you do. There is a bit of time. I'll get to, I'll get told by um, okay. Martin if we've run well, out it's, of time. It's for anyone, um, really. Uh, just, so just in terms of the, you talked about the design, but I mean, you could argue in terms of the design, it's it's, it's going to be what one house along, well, the only house really along that part of the, the road, um, on the main road. And opposite, you've kind of got flats as well that kind of back out onto the main road. Uh, so, I mean, from that point of view, do you think it, it doesn't really, it's not so important in terms of the design, it's not going to be next to other houses, um, 
you know, along the actual residential roads. Um, yeah, if you want to expand upon that, why that might still might be an issue for you guys. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, there, there are actually no houses on Barnsbury Lane, um, so there would be the only two houses on Barnsbury Lane technically, and they are right next to the houses on on Sunray. So you'd see the Sunray house, and then you'd see these two, um, and it would it would be, they would look completely different, and it sets the whole scene. Yes, I, I take your point about the flats, but they're not obviously part of the Sunray estate. Yeah, thank you very much. I think there's another question, so thank you. Okay, um, Councillor Shaper, if you've got a quick question, um, because we're probably running out of time. Five minutes. Thanks, thanks, Manager. It was just a quick question. Hello, hello, Paul. Hello, Janine. Um, it was just a very quick question about opposite. You talked about the narrowing of the road. Um, I, I know we saw a picture of it earlier, Alex. You put it up for us, but I, it was just um to see whether there'd been, uh, what's the history of that? If you could, if you're able to just quickly explain um, your concerns about that area of cars obviously going into the driveways into the drive in, in, whether you could just quickly mention whether you'd had any whether there'd been a history or what your experiences are of that air of that bit of the road uh, sure I'm, I'm, I'm a very young resident here I've, we've only been here six or seven years um, Linda you probably have more knowledge on that well to my knowledge that that piece of road has been built out certainly before I moved in in 1982. Um, it's built out to narrow the road, to narrow Barnsbury Lane um, and for double for yellow lines to be pa painted on the other side of the road to stop parking on both sides of Barnsbury Lane. Because if you have both parking on both sides of the Barnsbury Lane, it's very difficult for buses to um, drive down and, and lorries and people to come out of those flats you were just talking about on the corner um, for us to access Sunray Avenue. So the road was, the pavement was built out with bollards and the pavement made wider so that the road narrows at that junction purely for a safety point of view. Yeah, and if I could yeah, just point out the blind that's... spot as well when you reverse out. Sorry, I think, uh, Martin, would you say time or is that a minute? Uh, yeah, no, that's time up. So, sorry, I, I um, can't um, have to, to finish there. Um, and so, um, and thank you, thank you very, very much um, for answering um, those questions. Um, we've now got five minutes. Um, uh, members have now got five minutes to um, speak to uh, ask uh, questions of the applicant. I have got um, Councillor Folder Hughes. I think is the first one I've got here. Uh Thank you, Chair. Um, so just a question on the um, the building line and the alleyway. Um, are you planning to make any changes to sort of the, to where, where that fence is? Are you planning to move that forward or backward? Because I know that that alley is already sort of, it was built for 1930s cars, not really modern cars. So it's already slightly too narrow um, for, for a lot of residents. So I, I would have some concerns if it were being narrowed. The where the fence is shown on the site plan much of it is where the existing fence is at the moment um with regard to the fence uh, next to linda's garage because the, the whole site is within the ownership of one sunray avenue we are we can chamfer that fence or dog -led, dog leg it or adjust it accordingly in order to improve access if required good thank you um, and I've got Councillor Sumner, would you, you've got an, a question of the applicant? Yes, thank you. I'd like to ask um, the applicant regarding um, the building regulations M42, um, which obviously breaches policy 3.6, I believe, without referring to my notes. Um, I would like to ask why that wasn't incorporated in the original design so that people could actually comment on it. And um, well, yeah, just why really, bearing in mind it is a policy. I was wondering why, why you hadn't include, included, you know, disabled access and, and, you know, and a lifetime home there. Um, internally, the room sizes were sufficient. Um, it was just a bit purely how we drew how we provide how we drew the drawings, and um, in in the past we have dealt with this by condition. Normally, uh, we were made aware of the concerns when the officers' report came out, and 
we immediately revise the drawings. So we have a set of drawings where they do comply. However, we have been told they, they could not be submitted as late material because they require additional uh, reconsultation of up to two to three weeks. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, I've got um, Councillor Self, have you got a question of the applicant? Thank you, Chair. You may have already answered this. Um, I just want to confirm what you've said. I I'm looking at the plans in front of me. Uh, it's a job. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. I'm going to describe it. Um, I, I'm in the rear alley between the rear of one Sunray Avenue, the solid the side of your. Uh, yeah. Not the side of your properties. I think we had a bit of interaction there. Um, and the, the rear, the, the alley that goes back be, behind Vincent Avenue. And I think you've indicated that where you at the moment, I don't know if I can show you this, but no, I can't. It's not going to work. Okay. Where, you've um, sharp, where you've got a sharp corner next to um, Linda's garage. At, three sunray avenue you you may have you're, you're in the ownership of that land but from what you've said you would be prepared to shamp for that corner that would reduce your amenity space for that property the minimum uh, uh, amenity space is 50 square meters per policy you've got 57 so you're tight on it but you're not that tight so is can you confirm you don't have to. I, I, sorry, I've waffled too much. Can you confirm that you would be prepared to chamfer that corner? Yes, we're prepared to chamfer that corner in order to um, improve access for Linda's garage. Okay, uh, thank you. Um, Councillor Beenan, you've got a, a question of the applicant? Uh, no, actually, no, no, uh, Malcolm's just clarified as well. Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. One That's, minute left. All right. Um, Councillor Sumner, is it something that you want to ask, uh, they want to do in, when we move on to the next stage or, or rather than just now? Yeah, all right. Uh, so I think that, that yeah, thank you. Um, so so uh, there are no more questions of the applicant uh, by any of the committee? No? All right then. Well, that, thank you very much for, for answering those questions. Um, uh, we can now, that, that is now the, the, the end of the, the public participation on the application. Um, and and you know, the applicant and, and the objectors can can leave, leave the meeting now and, and follow the rest of the, the, the meeting on, on the YouTube. Um, and, um, and if we just move now on to Alex, I don't know if you want to um, sweep up any of the issues that came out of, of that, um, those uh, questions. Um, and then I'm probably, um, I'm thinking in particular, just looking perhaps at that, um, that section in the alleyway where, um, where the applicant has said that they may well um, do something with the, the fence. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I could sweep up a few items, I'd, I'd just like to reiterate that this development proposes um, an additional family dwelling, um, which the borough is in, in great need of. Um, I'd also like to remind members that we are in the tilted balance and, and this development would make a positive, albeit small contribution towards meeting that target. Um, in terms of the design, we feel that the area is varied because it does back onto flats on the other side of Barnsbury Avenue, as well as um, integrate with the Sunray estate um, and we feel the design is, is both high quality and would be in keeping with the surrounding area. Um, in terms of the concerns raised about the access lane to the rear, um, highways have raised no objection to this scheme um, and we believe that as it stands the application would allow safe access um, to continue through that back lane. However, if the applicant is willing to chamfer the corner of their rear boundary. Um, I, d I don't see why that couldn't be resolved by a condition. Thank you, Chair. Okay, th thank you very much. Um, and um, are there any questions from members um, to, to Alex? Um, Councillor Folder Hughes. Hi, Alex. Um, so, a couple of questions, really. One um, quick one on what you just said. The, have the highways officers actually taken into account the, the alleyways and the private access? Because I, I know that they would take into account our highways and what are the effect on, on on council roads, but have they considered what those alleyways are used for? 
and uh, consulted, perhaps not consulted with residents on a case by case basis, but do they know, for example, that residents on that on that road are are using those alleyways now um, uh, for car storage? Yes, the council's highways engineers um, would respond to our consultation as they have done, taking into account the site context, so not just the proposals for the dropped curb and the parking provision and whether you know they are safe and accessible, but how the land meets its boundaries and, and whether access could be safely achieved to and from that back lane. Um, if, if Eunice would like to interject at this point, I'm happy for him to um, comment, but um, we believe it is safe as the proposal has been presented, but if the applicant is willing to chamfer a corner of the rear boundary to further improve the situation, then I don't see why that couldn't be resolved by a condition. Uh, I'm happy to come if the chair wants me yep. to come. No, okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, to answer the question, yes, we will consider the alleyway because any impact in the alleyway will impact on the capacity of the road because if the alleyway is going to be blocked, that means there is a lot of access to all these garages. So we need to consider it even if it is not highway because the impact from anything from this application it will impact on the whole of the area. So yes, we will consider it, Chair. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, sorry, Alison, uh, I will just throw in one, yep. another one. I'm uh, re really sorry, I wouldn't, I wouldn't normally do this, but the <laughs> second, second question I had was uh, actually for Eunice as well, if, you, if Eunice doesn't mind. It was on the um, pedestrian bollards. I wanted to ask actually, what, what are those bollards there for? Because I've noticed them before. And what is going to be the impact of this application on their utility um, to, to do their purpose? I mean, the bollards usually we provide them to stop people parking on the footway because sometimes, as you know, the road is not wide enough. Yeah. And sometimes some SGV, in order to do delivery or do whatever, people intend to park on the footway. So hence, we provide some time uh, ballard in order to stop such an activities. So that is really the main purpose of them. And uh, now is, you know, if there is any ballard, definitely we need to look at it. If there is not fitting the objective, I don't think there is need to be uh, to be remain. So I'm happy to look into that, Chair. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you. Um, Councillor Gander? Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I wanted to talk about um, the bollards and also um, just about um, the access from those houses onto the road. Um, I think I think the objector said uh, something about um, when the when cars reverse onto the road, um, it's narrow. Um, it would be dangerous for any uh, other vehicles. Um, and I just wondered, is there anything? different about this access onto the road because we know that people re reversing onto main roads um, is, is illegal uh, but many many people do it um, and that, so it may well be possible for those uh, residents to reverse into their property um, drive as, as other people can. wanted to explore that and, and to go back to the bollards uh, were you saying that um, if they're needed, if they still perceive that they're needed, could they be replaced slightly in a different place? I mean, I gather they'd be obstructing the drive so it wouldn't really work, but if, could they be put in front of the properties to protect that area from, from HUVs, et cetera, parking on there uh, and, and obstructing and making it dangerous? Uh, yes, it could be. We, sorry, Chair. <laughs> To let you um, yeah, no, yeah, no, you can come back um, just to, to, yeah, so to see if they I'm need sorry. to be put in. I mean, I, my, my observation was that, you know, I, I, so I would like to hear that answer because I, that's, um, I had something in, in my mind as to whether that was possible or not. No, I think it is possible but because you know what's happening. Because there is a drop curve, people, they will take the opportunity in order to use it to start climbing on the footway. So if we want to put the ballast, we want to reallocate it in order to make sure such activity is not taking place. It is a possible and it is something we can consider. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor Sumner? Sorry, Chair, there was oh. the reversing. Oh, sorry, sorry, yeah. Do you want to answer that one, yeah. Eunice, as well? Yeah, actually, as, as, as Councillor Ganda said, she's absolutely right. Um, it's not it's 
not something new. Uh, we would like, according to the highway code, everybody to reverse and go back onto their own, uh, you know, driveway and exit with the forward gear. Uh, in ideal circumstances, we would like to have some sort of turning movement in order to allow the car to do 3.10 and exit. But unfortunately, sometimes it's very difficult and we cannot force because there is no uh, uh, area or no, you know, uh, a possibility to do so. So our hand is a bit tight. So do we accept the uh, off-street parking or not accept the off-street parking? Because if you don't uh, uh, accept the off-street parking with such circumstances, that means you're gonna put more pressure on the state and it's already there is yellow line, as you know, a boundary, they can't park there. So I have to park somewhere so far. And if you have family unit and you know the children and all of it, so you need to think of all these points. I know it is not ideal, but we need to balance it between all of it and make a decision what the best uh, to, to the community and to the area. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Um, if we can go to Councillor Sumner. Thank you, Chair. I have questions for both Eunice and also for Alex, um, okay. if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, I might as well take Eunice since he's um, already ably answering questions. Um, my questions relate to the road surface and also the pathway outside the proposed building plot. Um, I do receive regular correspondence from residents saying about the pathway and the road surface immediately around that area. Um, the pathway is, uh, many people feel, is a hazard, particularly for people with mobility issues. Um, and I do get regular complaints about that. My concern is adding into crossovers in that area is going to add to, to that. And I'm very concerned because we do have quite a few residents on the Sunray and Egmont Estate with mobility issues. And bearing in mind it's already a very uneven surface, my question is, what is going to happen in that in respect to that it's a very narrow pavement you're going to have crossways going into there and we're already dealing with mobility issues the second one is obviously regarding as you'll probably know um eunice um the the road surface is, is extremely extremely thin and um, at that corner it's a concrete slab full, covered by a small tiny layer of tarmac tarmac and um, that does cause huge problems with both pooling during rainwater and flooding and also obviously because it's such an on it's quite it, we do i get complaints on a regular basis from people on that use that road and i am concerned that any additional um parking going over the crossover from that corner may just exasperate that so that was my questions to you Nis. would we like to answer that first in the chair or would you like me to continue and then everybody come back myself um so there wasn't any background noise sorry i muted myself so that you couldn't hear um yeah i think if we just carry on uh, if, if eunice just answers that question yeah. so we don't we don't lose sight of the, the questions so thanks okay thank you chair so i know it's not ideal i know we would like not to have a crossovers but crossovers at time there are a uh, reason behind them because imagine if you have a disabled person and he lives in this house and he needs a disabled car. So the crossover is it's something we need to provide him. That is, that is uh, for example, but this, we have a policy. So what I'm trying to say here, if I don't have a new development and I have any property there and they request to have a crossovers, we have a policy and we follow the policy. If the policy said, because according to the policy, this gentleman, if he's a new, not a new home, normal home, will be able to give him that because uh, it's not against our policy. So hence, I know it's not ideal and it's not something, you know, uh, uh, desirable for wheelchair users, but our hand sometimes is a bit tight because by, by law, I think we should provide it unless we have very good reason not to. So that's to answer your first question. The second question is, uh, if the condition, if you're saying the condition is gonna be uh, worse because people driving, well, for the level of, 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 of traffic using Brownsbury Lane, I think adding another one or two cars is not gonna make it worse. That's my view. Okay. Thank you. Th thank you for that, Eunice. Um, 
Councillor Sumner, you've got some more questions. Is it for Alex or is it for Eunice? Okay, for Alex, right. please. Alex, yeah. thank you. And I was wondering for the um, the benefit for people for residents at home, not necessarily for us, for us councillors. I say cheekily because I don't actually know what Section seventy three is. Could you explain what you mean by a commitment to Section seventy three in the future? Mean in reference to obviously the failure to comply with build, building regulations M42, which is policy 3.8. Um, because this to me is very important. So, if you could perhaps explain that, what that means, um, and secondly, could you just confirm our statement of community engagement? Do you feel that contacting residents a couple of days before? submitting a planning application would comply and you know is in line with our statement of resident um our, our commitment to resident communication um i've just written it down sorry i get nervous believe it or not our statement of community engagement because to me contacting residents and residents association just a couple of days before you submit your planning application does not actually to me suggest that there was there was a lot of genuine um, resident engagement prior to submitting the planning application. So I'd like your views on that, please. If I could take your last question first, Councillor Falchkoff Sumner. Um, we encourage all our applicants to engage as much as possible with the local community. Um, we feel that the applicant in this case, whilst consulting maybe a short time before submission, has fulfilled the requirements of the statement of community involvement, um, has engaged um, with the surrounding neighbours um, and we have had um, quite a large response from local neighbours as a result of that and the council's consultation on the application. Um, so we feel that neighbours and local residents have had good opportunity not only to view the plans but to respond consult and, and raise their concerns with us which have been taken into account um and sorry could you briefly repeat your first question it, by all means it was in regard to um whether you could explain what is meant by and again he's referred to my notes um committing to that the, that they are happy to commit to a section 73 in the future what do you mean by that and can you tell me in what respect is that got any waiting in planning law there is also another question about something else that was mentioned about the um, air source pumps now i didn't notice and please please correct me if i'm wrong but i didn't notice any commitment within the within um the actual um, planning conditions that will be added and is that going to be added as a planning condition uh. Alex, do you want to answer that? Because I think that can say which probably which condition it's under. But if you if you want to answer, answer those two questions, so um, just to clarify, a section seventy three is a minor material amendment to a planning permission. Um, it's a type of application that the applicant could submit in um, short order after any future permission to resolve the. M42 accessibility issues, but I would like to clarify with members that there were very few issues that needed resolving on this point. It was largely to do with the entrances um, and doorways of, of the proposed dwellings, which could easily be lowered to ground floor level to fully comply. Um, as the applicant said in their presentation, all the room sizes, floor to ceiling heights and other aspects of M42 had fully been complied with, but there were just a couple of outstanding matters um, which we feel could easily be resolved. Okay. Is that the answer? Are you, are you happy with uh, Sharon? I think you're on mute. Are you, um, is that answering your? Um, partially. Um... For me, when I was looking at this, one of the things that, that did strike me is obviously we are a, we are a borough which prides ourselves in our um, certainly desire and, and hopefully our commitment to being fully inclusive to people with disabilities. And it did strike me that to um, recommend something to, be, to recommend something to be permitted when it was breaching disability policies, um, I, I did find that it was a little bit uncomfortable for me. Um, I would actually prefer that we defer this until we can all review the amended plans and bring it back to, to neighbourhood. I, I would actually like to propose that 
because I feel that a deferment, whilst we review that, I, it would certainly help to ally, to ally my concerns about the planning application. And I, that's one thing I would like to propose if other members are minded to do so. Okay, um, I think we probably just will, if we continue, keep that one um, to the side when we'll listen to other members' uh, contributions and then oh, visit that at, at the end. Um, and so, so Councillor White, would you like to make a comment? Uh, oh, sorry, ask a question of, of, Al, of Alex. Thank you. Yes, please, Alex. Um, I'm really sorry. I, I, I sort of got the picture. I think I know what it means. But could you explain to me technically and also spell it for me? What is this chamfer thing that we do with a fence? I'm really sorry. I don't know the term. Yeah, uh, Alex, can, is there a possibility that you can be put the images up so that we can get a uh, sight of that? Is that possible? I, I can reshare the presentation and the aerial view of the site plan and I'll, I'll try and speak over the top of that if you just bear with me a second. Chair, can you see the screen? Uh, yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, so basically um, the boundary to the side of plot one, as you can see, has a dog leg. Um, the Barnsbury Lane already had a dog leg, but the applicant is proposing to chamfer the corner um, to the rear of number three, which I believe is this property, and the objector's garage is, is cited here. So my understanding is that the applicant is proposing to chamfer or taper, possibly cutting away this corner of the rear boundary to aid access and egress from this garage. Obviously, we would have to see that in plan form and consult our highways engineers to ensure that um, the correct area of the boundary was chamfered to provide a um, an actual benefit but that's my understanding of the area that they could chamfer to aid access and egress okay um Councillor white sorry could i just so is chamfer the same as taper i was just wondering what the technical um to, what the technical explanation is and can you tell me how to spell it please yes <laughs> so i will just look at the dictionary definition but chamfer is c h a m f e r And it's a transitional edge between two faces of an object. Thank you. Oh, all right. Um, and so can we go on to the next one I've got on my list as councillor. Um, Mark Bainan, have you got a, a question of Alex or, or the, the officers? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Well, yeah, well, a couple of questions. The first one was just about, well, I'm learning lots of new terminology today, but the chamfer and, or dog leg. Um, it's just, with how, especially how it will be, in, how, who's going to decide? I mean, if the, it's, it's, it's good that the, um, the developers or will, will be, well, they're going to the owners were looking to accommodate um, the needs of uh, the next neighbour, Linda. Um, they'll put a proposal forward. Who's going to decide if it's going to be adequate or not? How do we enforce um, any condition that we might apply? Um, what we would have to do is enforce a condition to any subsequent approval by this committee um, and my suggestion obviously in agreement with with the chair would be to attach a prior to commencement condition so that the applicant could submit details as to how that northeastern boundary could be chamfered to improve access and egress to the garage at number three um, and as part of that condition, we would consult our highways engineers to ensure that the proposal was safe and um, achieved the objectives um, that the condition set out to. Um, Alex, can I ask a, a question? Because we've already got a condition for the fences. And so could it not just be added to that condition or do you need to have a new condition? Um, that, that is an alternative that we could edit the existing boundary condition to inc include that that specific aspect. 
without adding an additional one yet yeah no that that, that, that i just wanted to to clarify that because that that was what i i thought we could maybe do would be to amend the wording in in that that condition um if we just carry on down i've got councillor abraham oh, sorry, I, 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 I had another question oh, all right sorry sorry uh and sabinian if you want to continue um well it was just yeah as well just to stay with the chamfer um for a second what how would you say what the objectives are the objectives are the objectives presumably allow to allow the next door neighbor to be able to park well to be able to so and and uh, enter and um exit her garage is that the you said they they need to be able to show they can achieve the objectives the objective, and the, would, the objective would be to aid the access and egress from the garage to the rear of number three sunray avenue okay i think there's well i've got another thank you very much i've got another question but there's a couple of people who seem to want to come in yeah. on this particular point i don't know chair if you want to yeah I'll if, leave if, you. If, if you can um if you just want to ask your uh, another question uh can sabina and then because uh, i've got um okay it was just about um i don't know who this is for exactly but um uh just looking after the um uh the rear well it's not, i guess that's the problem it's not really the rear of these new buildings but the alleyway is because the um, all the, the houses that have the kind of with the gardens back onto the alleyway they they it's conditioned that they look after you know their particular um well the, the, their area of the kind of the alleyway their half of the, the alleyway that, that they back onto um i don't know if it's just been left out uh, accidentally but um could the, the could we have similar conditions for i guess it might be just one property as this is something that's raised by the objectors um that may be if that's not been posed then it may be that i mean there's lots of fly tipping going on it may be that they won't be you know that, that part of the anyway won't be looked after so can we put, propose a condition so that they are responsible for kind of looking after that section of the alleyway that is adjacent to the fence or or, 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 or yeah to, the, to, the, to their boundary sorry my understanding is is that the, the the site boundary does not include that alleyway so i i don't see what mechanism we could use to improve or um alter land outside of that red line boundary unfortunately okay well uh, well i don't know if it's got it wrong but according to the objectors they're saying that, that this, these are conditions that are already in place for the existing properties um they've got the garages so they back on to the boundary to, to the alleyway um and they have these conditions in place or uh, is that not the case my understanding is that they could be legal covenants and and they wouldn't fall under the remit of planning um which is is not something that we we could consider as part of the assessment of of this application okay so if so it could be legal covenants. so when would that come into play how would that um if that's not something we can we can consider today or or it wouldn't that. it wouldn't be unfortunately and um, that would be a, a, c a civil legal matter can can i just ask there just as a as, uh, so that means that the existing house the one sunray would have that covenant already though because they live at this yeah. house yeah. and go back onto that alleyway so they must already be covered under that covenant and that's not transferring to because they're losing that back or that bit back then it's there they then aren't covered i don't see how that um you know how that would get transferred because what one unfortunately it's a, it's a legal matter i'm not i'm yeah. not qualified to answer but it does fall outside the the boundary of the site we're considering this evening um and, and it's not something we could consider as part of this proposal um, okay, well, thanks. Okay. Thanks. For, just before I, I, I just mentioned, yeah, I think it's quite important because of the, they, they have, we, well, no, there's been an issue with fly tipping and the maintenance of the alleyways. So um, I guess it may not be something we can do much about today. But I mean, if if the um, proposers are listening, then yeah, it'll be something that yeah, just to bear in mind. And um, yeah, if there's anything that can okay. be done about that, I think it'd be quite important. Thank you. Okay. Um, so um, I've got um, Councillor Abraham. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, as we are still talking, I've got two questions, one to Alex and one to uh, uh, Eunice. So I'll, I'll start. As we're still talking about chamfering and the that part of the garden. Uh, Alex, uh, Madam Chair, can I ask the question to Alex in relation yeah. to the, there's an entrance, a side gate there uh, in the plans. 
So which means um, that comes off that side gate. If you're going to chamfer that part of the land, that will have to come off. Or are they, where, where is that going to go? Because you, you see at the corner, there's a sort of a little um, gate there. So I, I, what's going to happen think, with that? Thank you, councillor. Yes, I, I can see the gate you're referring to. It's labelled rear gate access. If that corner were to be chamfered, um, I, I don't see why that access could not be um, repositioned along the length of that boundary fence. Um, it, it's perfectly possible because it has such a long expanse of, of fence there. If if the developer still felt a rear access gate was necessary. Now, my concern, Madam Chair, is that, again, we're going to have the same problem with the garage of number three. The idea of chamfering was so to give her access. And if you're going to have a gate there and someone's going to walk in and out, then there is a danger again. And she's still going to, the resident's still going to have a problem. So we need to look at that and where that access gate is going to come along. Uh, because we are, I, the idea of chamfering was to provide at the resident at number three and access so we need to look at that so could i could i leave that with you all to look at how, how it's going to go i don't know chair would you like me to respond to that yeah, yes if, if you could because i think if it's it's cited at some point as they still decide they want a rear access gate as i understood um you said that it, they could have the gate at any point they don't have to have it at that corner um they can have it at any point along the length of of that that fence um and but that would obviously be an issue for anyone coming you know driving in and out of of that they would need to be careful when they come out of the gate yes and and i un understand the councillor's concern about um any conflict with pedestrians coming out of their property onto that rear um, access lane but I understand that is an existing situation and other properties on on that road have access to the rear if we were to amend condition 7 uh, sorry condition 10 as previously proposed um, asking for that boundary to be chamfered to improve access to the garage of number three um, then we would along with that assess any repositioning of that gate to ensure that it was safe and it would go past our highways engineers um, to ensure that they were satisfied there would be no highway safety issue. Thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, while we're on that topic, you you asked somebody, I think Mark, a Councillor Bainian mentioned about the legal covenants. I mean, obviously, being a solicitor myself, I know for a fact that the legal covenant on the property will carry on to any new property, even though that's been partly transferred. So the legal legal covenants will stay on yeah. on that property, so it can't change. Yeah, uh, that the covenants are there unless mm -hmm. uh, modified or uh, been uh, removed, which I doubt it would be. So that's that's the position on that normally. Uh, I was just, the other question I had to um, uh, Eunice was. Um, Councillor Sumner mentioned about the uh, uh, road surface where the um, uh, crossover is going to be, those crossovers. Now, if, uh, as it stands in Council Sumner says that it's really bad and thin and that it's uneven, et cetera, is there a possibility, and I don't know whether it's a possibility or not, Madam Chair, that that surfaces could be redone properly while this build is going on because the crossover is coming there. I don't know whether it's possible or not. It's something whether the, it can be as part of this whole condition that the area is done up properly. So we do not have the difficulty of, um, uh, you know, anyone going on wheelchairs or, or whatever it may be, um, you know, and people walking to pedestrian or otherwise. It, just, um, uh, just to put it out there and whether um, Eunice will be able to tell us yeah. whether it can be done or it can be part of the whole as a condition. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Eunice, would you like to answer that question? I mean, uh, I, I think it looks I, like there's quite yeah. a big um, <laughs> uh, drop, drop carb anyway, but um, yeah. Can I, I, I will answer this question. Um, I'm just anxious about the chamfer issue <laughs> because if you think about it, you have to uh, define it because that chamfer could be very big area and could be very small area. So 
you have to be careful because if it got to be a big area that will be losing the amenity then will be against the policy so i'm just anxious about this issue of the chamfer i know for improving visibility sight line for the resident be able to get in and out of the garages so it is something i think we should work with everybody in order to provide it but at the same time we can't take very big land or because he shouldn't he's showing goodwill at the at, at an applicant so we have to be careful here how much we are taking out of the chamfer so i think we need to be very careful here we don't want to leave it it's like we're gonna take very big slice of his garden and it's something very important to be mentioned here i only pay, i can see we're gonna have very small triangle from the top in order to allow the visibility sight line or maybe we can ask him to put mirror for these garages opposite so they'll be able to in and out safely so the chamfer with the mirror it will help them together for the alleyway it's so just to to address the concern of this resident okay now about about the crossovers because it is highway works we usually we do it ourselves we don't allow anybody to come and work on the public highway so we usually ask the applicant to give us the money and rbk contractor will do the crossovers so if you want me to include all the footway between the two crossovers uh um uh, it is something we can ask the applicant if he's willing to uh, pay for that we definitely we welcome it and uh and it's something is goodwill from the applicant to the resident and to the area to show he is really part of this community and he wants the best to this community but strictly speaking i can't force it i only can force the area outside the property itself and if there is any impact from the construction or whatever then we can ask them to rectify it and do it right but if our footway is already in bad shape it's very difficult for me to push unless he show goodwill and he want to be part of the community. Thank you, Chair. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, I've got um, um, Councillor Self. Go back up my list to, to find. <laughs> so, Councillor Self, you've got a question. I think we've talked about chamfers enough. I had in mind yeah. a 45 degree chamfer from the corner of the rear carriage of number three Sunray Avenue. That's what I had in mind. I'd leave it to officers and the condition. I don't think it, we're going to get any further with that this evening, but yeah. that, that, I, I, that's what I had in mind. Um, I, I'm coming back to M42, the accessibility issue. Councillor Fatskoff, someone suggested we might need to defer this application um so that that can come back to us I, I i i absolutely do not think we need to defer it because we've heard this evening from the applicant himself saying that um they're happy to make amendments to comply with him for two um now obviously we need to nail that down i'm not just going to take his word for it i'm sure his word is absolutely fine but we, we and we've spoken about a section three application Alex, so my question, Alex. I know you've sort of been asked this before. I knew, I know about section three applications. Maybe I, but I don't know everything about them. I thought a section three, se sorry, a section seventy three application, you could vary or change a condition attached to an application. So we wouldn't leave it so that uh we're relying on the applicant to cut so if this should this get approved tonight we wouldn't want to leave it for the applicant to subsequently for them to have to put in a section 73 application because they might never do that and then they might not comply with m4 too so how do we cover that or can it be covered in the condition that um m42 must be complied with that's my question. Thank you. If if councillors wanted further security above and beyond the commitment the applicant has made, then it is possible to attach a pre-commencement condition to any approval requiring demonstration of full compliance with M42. Okay. Thank thank you, Alex. Um so um Councillor Boulder Hughes, have you got a question? Uh, yeah, 
uh, sorry, and just a quick comment. I I can't can no longer vote on this item because uh, my brows are cut out. Um, so just making that clear to members of the public why, when I, when I don't vote later on in the discussion. Um, my question was on the um, on um, Sharon's proposed amendment. Um, is there a risk that um, the applicant would be able to appeal for non determination if we went for this amendment? Um, because my my concern would be that you know we've put back a lot of planning applications by quite a few months. At what point would this need to be determined? Um, okay, um, Alex, have you, can you answer that? Um, it, it is within the applicant's gift to um, lodge an appeal against non-determination. Um, the application's target date was the 11th of September this year, um, and we have brought the item to the first available committee, which is obviously tonight in November. So that is within the applicant's gift, um, should they choose to take that option. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Shaper. Sorry, I think um, so Sheila <laughs> picked up on my question okay. earlier, so that's fine. Thanks. All right, uh, Councillor um, Sumner. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to come back. I know people are saying they don't want to talk about, about the chamfer anymore. But I've just got a question, and it's, it's a legal question, and it's one for, for Alex. Now, my understanding is, is that under permitted development, we could agree the chamfer now in a planning condition, but the owner of the site could just use permitted development rights to put their fence right up to their boundary anyway. Is that is that correct? Because there seemed to be no point as thrashing out a planning condition to, to chamfer the edge if actually the person who purchases that plot could just turn around and go actually I want to take back that bit of garden um so are we going to back that up with any kind of article four direction to stop that happening otherwise isn't it really just a planning condition which doesn't have any teeth um but again please please let me know what you what you feel because that's my concern on that one although it's a fantastic idea I really I, I'm really thankful for the the applicant and their agent saying they're willing to do this but ultimately as soon as they sell the property it passes out of their hands and so you know it's what can we do to make sure that that actually stays in situ and that people don't just use their permitted development rights to erect a meter of up to 1.8 meters alex do you want to answer that thank you thank you councillor um an Article 4 direction wouldn't be the appropriate mechanism to employ in this case, but Councillor Falchkoff Sumner is right that ordinarily um, permitted development rights would allow you to erect a, prop um, a boundary of up to two metres in height um, along your, your property boundary. Um, if councillors were minded to, we, we could remove um, permitted development rights to ensure that that chamfering of the corner remains in situ um, and, and we could remove it specifically for that northeastern boundary. Okay and and with that could that be within the same condition or is that an, another condition? So amending the that, that would have to be a, a standalone okay. condition. Okay. Okay right um so looking down my list, I've got uh, Councillor Gander, have you got something you want to ask Alex or Eunice? Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I, I, you don't want comments yet, do you? No, Is that right? no just yeah. questions of the officers at the moment before we go to, yeah. to the, the next stage. Right. It's, it's, it's kind of a question comment, but um, sorry, it's just, I'm sorry, I'm going to say chamfer again, but uh, it was my impression that it was about the manoeuvrability into the garage. It wasn't about sight lines. Um, so for me, it's a, it's a chamfer rather than a mirror, for example. So that, I think I would stick with that. Um, the, there is one we've been valiantly battling away to, um, listening to what the objectors were saying and there's one thing which was about not obstructing the alleyway during the build and I imagine that that's something that is just naturally taken care of in 
building control or is it um, that that would be dealt with? So if, we, if you could just reassure um, the objectors on, on that point. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all for now, thank you. Alex, would you like to? Thank you, Councillor Ganda. Um, I could just uh, provide reassurance that um, there is an existing condition suggested for a construction management plan, um, which would be prior to commencement of development to ensure that a number of issues to uh, ensure neighbouring residential amenity were bottomed out. Um, and that includes provision for loading and unloading materials, site access, um, the suppression of dust, etc. So we have a, a fully comprehensive construction management plan in place to address that. Thank you. All right. Um, so, um, Councillor Sumner, are you saying your internet had cut out? So does that mean you, um, for a period of time, um, does that mean you can't vote in the in in, in this? Um, yeah, I'm ab absolutely. Um, gutted but um sadly i'm in full in full um disclosure here yeah my internet cut out for approximately 30 seconds so i missed the beginning of alex's response to about the article okay. 4 direction so i'm um, sadly i'm unable to vote but i would like to make comments in the summing up if that's okay that that's absolutely fine thank you thank you for being honest <laughs> um right so um i think that's all the questions i have at the 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 uh, for the officers um i now go on to to the next stage which is is opening it up to to comments um by the by the the members so i think we've had quite a lot lot of things um said here so i i probably would just say that um you know we'd want to to keep it as brief and and, and be keeping to not uh, um repeating points uh, so if we could do that that would be great um so is there uh, any members who would like to to make uh, a comment at this point now oh. councillor sumner you would like to make a, a comment um, yeah, uh, particularly as I, I can no longer vote on this item, um, I would just like to say that I, I feel that there is there are some real positives to this scheme, and I I have no objections to infill um, sites generally. I think the positives, it, in some respects, have it building a bit more close to the service roads does allow for um, greater oversight of that area, which where we do have fly tipping, and so I do perceive there are benefits. I. I do still have concerns regarding particularly the way that the the property opens up quite closely onto the pavement and i do wish that um if, if i was voting i would actually vote to reject not because i don't agree with building something here i just feel that there should there is a better solution that would allow some element of construction on this site but would actually mitigate my serious concerns regarding the pathway, which is very narrow, does get used by a lot of people with um, with mobility problems. And I would be voting to reject. Um, uh, but uh, having said that, I do feel obviously the applicants are working quite hard to try and overcome some of these problems. And I just feel if, if we were to either reject and ask, or invite them to come back with a better scheme, um, then it's something that I, I would be able to support in future. Um, but I accept that I'm not allowed to to vote. I do ask if members do decide to permit, can we please make sure that there is an Article 4 direction to guarantee that that fence isn't built right up to the boundary because I do feel that access to Linda's garage is a very important point. And if we can anyway get some guarantee or use of the sill in order to, to resurface the pavement outside those buildings um then i would i would ask my fellow my fellow councillors please to try and push for that because i can't do it because i can't vote thank you go ahead thank, thank you for for those comments um councillor folder hughes have you got some comments again just because i can't vote um, i thought i'd just give an indication of how i would have voted um i think on balance i would probably have voted to approve with um so with the conditions that we've discussed during um this discussion um, my fear if we don't approve is actually twofold um first of all i think it could go through an appeal and i think it could get approved without um the uh, security that 
Linda and uh, residents in the surrounding area need. Um, and I think it could go. Uh, and I think it could. It, it, I, th I think it could be a much worse um, building without those, without those, uh, without without those amendments, which we can only secure by amending and then approving. Then the second uh, thing that I'd like to add to the discussion is I, I don't think members should be looking to uh, to further discussion in any way uh, for sort of similar reasons. Just that I think an appeal for non determination would be a really bad thing. And it would it would again lead to a circumstance where we aren't able to improve this scheme, uh, and be, be beyond uh, be, beyond just the goodwill of the applicant. Which, as much as I think this applicant seems they, they seem like nice people, but I I don't tend to trust applicants as a as a rule. Okay, th thank you very much for those uh, comments, um, Councillor Self. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I've listened to the previous two comments and obviously all the questions, some of which verged into comment. Um, I've seen back garden developments, and one could, could call this a back garden development, it is in a back garden after all, uh, that, are, are, that I really uh, have been very much opposed to. So you could say, therefore, that I'm opposed to back garden development. Um, however, on this particular one, I think it's a particularly well-designed scheme. It it will result in two, I think, attractive houses. I think they will fit in with the area and uh, elements of the design of the houses in the Sunray estate have been to, uh, used by the architect on, on to, to come up with the design on these buildings. So I would compliment the architect on this particular occasion, so I don't always do that. Um, I think they are in keeping. Um, I, I live in a 90, house built in the 1920s and nothing like these. Um, even, and, and we've got around me, I've got lots of houses built in the 1930s and we had as of typically semi-detached houses and some detached uh, with large, long, long rear gardens. Um, we don't get that so much these days, and I don't think I don't think we have to be cognizant of the fact that we're not going to get that. Um, so these the the amenities, the outdoor amenity space on these houses is towards the minimum end. I say towards, but it, it is it, it does exceed them, even with the much talked about chamfer. It will exceed the minimum requirements. So I, I absolutely. Um, I, I would say I picked on the design I like. I also like the fact that the sustainability, 48% less than part L is much better than we often get. We'd like zero carbon um, and maybe we will get that in 10 years time. At the moment, we don't get zero carbon really generally. So I would applaud the architect again on coming up with 48% less because that's better than the 35% less that, than we often get. Um, so with the M42 pre-commencement condition, provided we can get that in, and the chamfer condition, I'll call it, I, I, I can't see why we can't go to a vote chair. I'd be very happy to put it, if you can put it to the vote chair. Thank, thank you very much, um, Councillor Self. Well, I, I've looked back through through my notes, and I think there are. Um, we've got the the condition condition for the the chamfer, our our new uh, favourite phrase of of the evening. Um, what I don't know, Alex, is whether um, we include the the mirror or not. I know that Eunice added that as a suggestion, but I, I don't know whether it's enough to 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 do to do the the, the fence um, being um, cut into. Um, and and then I've got the um, M42 pre-commencement um, condition, um, and and the PD rights um, for the for the fence. So so those are the three that I think I've got. Um, yeah, that, that's the three that I've got. So I don't know um, if um, we can take those. I think I, I get the sense that all everybody was in agreement with all of those things anyway, that would be likely to vote. Um, so so can I take those conditions as a whole or would you prefer to separate them? Madam Chair, can I just quickly ask, was that including the highways asking the applicant for the um, to, to, to pay towards the cost of the footway? I think I'm particularly interested in that one i'd like to know if that can be a condition i i'd probably seek um officers advice on that but i would have thought that that 
wouldn't but that that wasn't what i think that was a, a goodwill gesture on the part of the applicant was that right or is that my understanding of that councillor holt chair um if i could just interrupt my understanding is that any improvement to the footway would be secured via a 278 agreement which would be um under the remit of our our highways officers mm -hmm. So does, does that mean, sorry, does that, sorry, Chair, does that just mean that we didn't have to make, you don't have to make that a condition now, but it can be factored into the, into the decision making process after tonight for this application? That's my understanding, Councillor Sharper, yes. But okay, Chair, thank, you, thank you. Chair, may I, may I yes. come in? Yes, if Eunice. you wanted that to be included, that need to be mentioned in section 106 if there is section 106 for this application okay and is is that the case yes we will be asking the applicant to enter into a legal agreement to um, preclude future occupants from obtaining car parking permits if the area was to be designated as a cpz in future so the applicant has already agreed and committed to enter into a legal agreement and we, we could add the clause that Eunice just mentioned into that. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Right. Um, okay. So um, I go back to the those um, things that we, we've already listed. Um, so do we, are we going to do, do I get a sense from the meeting that we want to do this? Um, if anyone could say that they don't want to, you can put in the chat to say that you wouldn't want to treat them as, as a whole, you want to do them individually. Otherwise I'll do them all together because I feel that everybody has been making similar comments. Okay, I've got uh, one part, nobody saying that they, they don't want to do it in bulk. So I'll treat them all together. Um, now, what I just need clarification on is whether the legal agreement part um, is part of this or whether I need to keep that separate. That's probably, Martin, do I need to have that as a separate vote? Uh, no, it's part and parcel of the um, the, the amendment that which okay. we can we can now ask the committee to approve as part of the original motion. Okay, and um, do I need to repeat the, the that's now four things? Do I need to repeat them or are you happy that we, I've, I've said them already? We're happy. Look, I think I've got some shaking heads to say yes, indicating yes. So, so okay, we're all agreed on on those things. Um, are we happy to go to to a, a, a vote then? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, Martin, do you want to to do the the vote? Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Um, so, so the first um, vote which we will have is to uh, to amend the original motion um, that was made at the beginning of the discussion uh, by the chair and, and, and seconded. So, therefore, we will be adding the the additional um, conditions and the um, also the, the reference to the Section 106 amendment. So I'm firstly going to ask if members are happy to approve those additional um, things going into, uh, into the motion. So we would be approving an amendment to the original motion before we have a vote on a substantive motion. If anyone is against the amendment could you indicate in the chat box at this stage and if there is any dissent i will then take a individual vote no there's no dissent there so we can treat it okay so we, we will take that as um unanimous approval for the amendment obviously not including the two members that have indicated they won't be voting and that's councillor sumner and councillor fold hughes so we will now go to the substantive motion uh, which is the original motion plus the amended added uh, additions that we've just um, just agreed on so i'll call members individually and if they can say if they are for against or abstaining so councillor abraham a four Councillor Bainham? Four. Councillor Gander? Four. Councillor Green? Four. Councillor Holt? Four. <coughs> Councillor Piper? Four. Councillor Self? 
four, and I confirm I've been present on through on this item throughout. Thank you, Councillor Sweeney. Four. Councillor White. Four. Councillor Jürgen Nathan. Four. Okay, so permission is granted for that scheme by 10 votes uh, to, to nil, obviously with two members unable to, to vote due to connection problems. And that is subject to the um, conditions, informatives and 106 within the report uh, and the additions that the committee have also approved as well. Yeah, and, and that will be um, for officers to come up with the appropriate wording and... Thank you. Um, so we'll now move on to um, item seven, as, which is the community grants, um, which is on in, in Appendix B of our, our papers. Um, if I'm not sure, did I go down to my papers? So we've got um, recommendations to, for um, three com community grants, uh, so neighbourhood community grants. Um, we've got some uh, an application for a council award funding towards um, some the festive lights and uh, Surbiton Town Centre, and also to to look at the the, the amendment or look to can reconsider and and adopt the allocation of council award funding um, in the paper. So. Um, if you want to look at the individual um, items, um, James Geach, um, the neighbourhood manager, will now present the report on each of, of those items. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. I hope you can hear me. I've not had the best of internet days, so hopefully I'm coming through loud and clear. Um, so as you've set out, um, the committee's been asked to do three things this evening. The first of which is to consider some neighbourhood community grants. Um, I'll take these each in turn. The first of these, as you can see in the report, is from Christians Against Poverty. And this is a, a request for two and a half thousand pounds. Um, as you can see, first of all, um, the group obviously meets all the minimum standards set out by um, the programme um, as being a registered charity. Um, this is somewhat unusually a neighbourhood community grant that is going to all four neighbourhoods following agreement with the neighbourhood chairs at the chairs forum. Um, with a request for this amount from each of the four neighbourhoods to make a total of £10,000. Um, this is to support them um, with more of their debt coaches. So they have debt coaches um, as part of the charity who work in the local hubs, um, helping residents out of debt. Um, and they do this by providing advice and friends. So as you can see um, in um, paragraph seven of the report, this is a programme that last year was solely supported by the South of the Borough uh, Neighbourhood Committee. And as set out in paragraph eight, um, they are currently working um, across the whole borough and are actively now working with 40 clients, um, many of whom have now fortunately debt free. Um, the charity have reported that though there's in some quarters a, a moratorium on evictions and debt collections uh, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the charity are expecting a surge in numbers as these grace periods begin to end. Um, and the charity are really fearful that it won't be able to cope with their current capacity uh, whilst only being open two days a week. Um, so as set out in paragraph nine, um, they plan to use this grant to help at least 20 local families out of debt and to run two sessions for volunteers to sort of walk alongside them in their journey. Um, they, they call these in-house as befrienders. Um, each uh, client will receive visits from the debt coaches um, to help them and support them along um, in their journey. Um, and the debt coach stays in touch. Um, and finally, uh, just to make it clear, this is a service that's open to everyone, regardless of their ethnicity, gender, religion, or sexual orientation or other status. Um, thus far, two of the other neighbour committees have considered this request and approved it. Um, it will go in turn to Mons and Coombe next week. Happy to take any questions, Joe. All right. Uh, th thank you, James. Um, are there any members who would like to speak on, on this, uh, comments or questions? Just put your name in the chat. Uh, Councillor Border Hughes. Hi, um, just a quick comment um, on paragraph 10. Really, really pleased to see this paragraph in there. Uh, my only um, observation would be that I think it would be good if we could start to mention um, gender identity explicitly um, in these reports, just just as a sort of point of practice, um, as, well as, as, as well as gender, um, which I know sounds pernickety, but I think it will be important to a 
to a minority of residents who really care about this. Okay, thank, thank you. Um, Councillor Sumner? Thank you, Madam Chair. I was just asking, will there be any sessions held specifically within Surbiton? Do you, um, James, would you like to answer that question? I mean, I think the, from, from looking at it, um, I, in fact, probably one of the things that I would probably like to do, and, and, and my co-chair Anita Shiba would like to do, is to have people coming back and telling us what they've done. So we've got some outcomes to see what where our money has been spent. But obviously, not that, that's not possible at the moment. But but um, James, do you want to comment on on the fact whether they will specifically be in in Surbiton or not? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, obviously, it's um, demand-led. Um, the applicant has shared with us the postcodes of all the residents they're currently working with, and I can assure you that is um, um, equitably distributed across the whole of the borough, uh, and many of those are in Surbiton. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor White? Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to hear the bit about the outcomes, because I do always think that that is uh, something that, that's missing for us. Um, just uh, uh, picking up on what Sam said slightly, um, given the, the name of this organisation, I think that uh, paragraph 10 maybe should have been paragraph one, really, just to reassure us from the very start that um, I, I do know that they're open to absolutely everybody. I think they're excellent and I think we should um, agree. Right, thank you. All right. Um, on, on that basis um i think we've not got anyone else um wishing to speak um can i can i take it that we agree to to this to, to giving of this grant um if anybody's got put their names in the chat if they're not no nope, i've not got any names coming up so so um there's um approving um that uh first item um christians against poverty um giving them a, a grant of 2500 um and i think probably i'll say this again but if if we can say um to to the all, all of the the applicants here that we would like to hear from them um in the future to to hear what their outcomes are and and how our money has helped them achieve those outcomes that would be great James, um, so do, do you want to go on to to the the, the next item, James? Yes, thank you, Chair. I'm very happy to take that on board. Um, so as you can see in the report, the next neighbourhood community grant is from the newly formed Friends of Victoria Rec. I know um, local war councils will be very aware of this um, organisation because they've been helping them set up in recent months. Um, as you can see in the report, they do meet all the minimum standards. Um, with the note that um, obviously they're brand new so they're yet to establish their accounts but um, we've seen in their constitutional documents that they will have that in future for future years um, so they are looking for a grant of £1,896 to renovate the flower beds at the entrance to the park uh, and also improve that area um, one of their first um, sort of acts um, once formed was a little survey of their members goals and priorities um, and this activity came out on top of that survey. Um, and it is the friend's view that this that a tidy, attractive entrance will set the right tone for the park and indicate to users that the park is well cared for and, and, and well maintained. Um, a little bit of history on the flower beds. Uh, they, they used to home uh, roses. However, uh, the roses are dead and the beds are now unkempt and full of weeds. And uh, the beds also um, contain some large self-set weeds. Um, which are not only unsightly, but um, possibly threaten the nearby tennis courts. So what the friends intend to do with the money is to restore those roads to roads beds and to establish a, a more diverse range of wildlife friendly planting for pollinators. Um, the double roses will be replaced with single roses and pollinator friendly perennials and grasses. Um, the large set, um, self set weeds will be removed and it's hoped that this will open up some improved sight lines across the entrance and into the park. Um, the, it's worth noting the project does require the removal of some large self-set shrubs and trees which have wildlife value um, even though they are weeds in this context um, what the friends are proposing to do is to replace these with the equivalent number of wildlife friendly shrubs along the railway line uh, and the park perimeter and I've set out those key tasks there in paragraph 15 um, and the, the grant money be um, used um, uh, to purchase those and to do those activities um, uh, it's also worth noting uh, that I've consulted uh, the council's green spaces team and biodiversity officer, and they are confirmed they are very happy uh, with the plans, especially as it enjoys the support of Ida Verdi, the council's contractors, 
who have made a kind of um, in-kind donation of uh, time to assist the volunteers in the form of skilled labour uh, plant and machinery. Um, uh, so subject to award, the works will take place between November and March of next year. Um, this is really the big first activity that the group will be undertaking. So they hope to use this as sort of like a flagship uh, event to help attract more members. Um, I'm happy to take any questions, Jim. Okay, thank you. I've got um, a couple of uh, uh, pe people who'd like to um, say something. So, Councillor Liz Green, would you like to? Thanks, Thanks Chair. Um, yeah, basically, it's a really good group. It got set up because of the application for the mass. Sorry, my daughter's just gone to bed, if you're wondering what the noises, is, uh, noises are. Um, but... Um, it's really starting to thrive now. Um, I think there's been two sessions there. I was at the last one. The weed bed, the weeds that are growing in the proposed place where the flower, uh, the roses were and will go back, actually are a lot less because they've been out uh, de-weeding it. Is they're working with uh, the biodiversity officer and with ID Verdi, um, with all kinds of plans across the park. So just to encourage people to vote for it, really. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Um, Councillor White? Just following on and obviously agreeing with everything Liz has said, I, I really feel that Community Days is really becoming um, a whole, it, it is the whole community and um, there's so many residents are coming out and they really appreciate working with um, the Biodiversity Officer, with ID Verdi, with everybody. Um, when, I was, was there at one um, a group of people who were living in Long Ditton and a part of a residence association asked if they could join in too, um, and it, it was it's just a brilliant feel. It's taking it, it's beautiful flower beds, a lot less rubbish and weeds and things like that, but it's actually the bigger picture, and this is exactly what we're about. Excellent. Oh, have to stop by and have a look. Um, uh, Councillor Abraham, would you like to say something? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a quick um, thing. On these various grants that come in, I'd like to see actually sometimes the um, uh, the applicants coming in and making these requests also. And also to see some, you know, like you said, these things have been done. It would be nice to see some photographs of what's gone on, what was there and what's going on. That actually encourages um, people to, you know, do something. So I'd like to see more of that in these various grants that are coming forward because half the time it's just written. We don't see anything else. Nobody bothers to come in, bid for it, and uh, we don't get feedback. So also I'm saying is that maybe if the ward councillors can take it away, they might want to think about a kitchen garden there. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. All, all good suggestions, but I, I think definitely, um, I mean, that there there are none of the applicants here tonight, uh, not because that they didn't want to attend, it's just that um, our, our COVID guidelines are saying um, uh, that, that the the, the officers of um I'm actually I'd, I'd probably say Martin might, might be better better person to answer this, but but we we aren't uh, inviting um the applicants along to to speak um on on the grants um we were coming along for the 30 minutes at the beginning and and we've got um participants in in the planning but not for this item so I, I, it's something that will be i have certainly um asked about and i will be pursuing because i think it is something that's really important that we do have this um and that we do hear from our applicants because i think it's it's about our communities and, I, and so i would quite like that to be um I, I will be following that up and i have followed that up so so i'm hoping um that we can get that changed for um coming meetings but i would certainly would want them to come back and tell us and i, I do think that's something that we should be um, making making sure it happens so so thank you for those comments thank you madam chair so the future you'll be looking at that thank you yes. yeah thank you um i've got a quick comment uh from councillor green I, it was just to say i'm sure they would have loved to come if we uh, have allowed them but for anybody who wants to see what they've done so far it's friends of victor on facebook it is friends of victoria rec surbiton um and I'm very happy to get some pictures from them and email them around to everybody that's uh, in the meeting. Um, and if anybody wants to set up their Twitter for them and run it, they'd be delighted because they don't do Twitter at the moment. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm not offering. <laughs> thank, thank you. Um, can um, uh, oh, uh, Councillor uh, Sumner, have you got a quick comment? Yeah. 
Oh, thank you, Madam Chair. Just very quickly, I do know that the um, the Good Life does have some pictures of the work that's going on in Victoria Rec. So if anyone wants to go online and look at the Good Life, they've got some pictures there. Thank you. OK, thank you. Um, so I think if, if um, all members have had um, who would, would like to speak have said something, I'd like to, to, to move that we um, take this um, grant forward. Um, is anyone who'd like to second that? Yep, okay. Councillor Green, you can second. Uh, thank you. Um, and and uh, can I take it as a unanimous um, support for that? Or if you can say in the chat box if it's not. Nope, lots of shaking of heads in a, in a positive way. So we'll take that as agreed unanimously. Thank you very much. Um, James, can we now move on to, to the, the next um, grant application from Save the World Club? Thank you, Chair. Um, so the, the last application for an every community grant this evening is from the Save the World Club. Um, obviously, most members will be aware of Save the World Club because it's long standing history as an environmental and creative arts uh, charity, um, primarily concerned with using recycled materials. Um, however, as set out in paragraph 19, the Save the World Club have also I mean, working very closely uh, with Kingston Voluntary Action um, and a local partnership of six other community organisations to collect, uh, redistribute and prepare surplus food for vulnerable communities. Um, it's particularly um, busy during the COVID-19 uh, period where they've been collecting and redistributing uh, perishable food free of charge to vulnerable people both in Surbiton and the surrounding areas, uh, collecting on average uh, five tonnes of food and goods per week. Um, very late in the evening from supermarkets, um, anti-social hours, um, the food is delivered immediately to individuals, community centres and churches and faith groups, as well as community groups and any centres where people can collect it. Um, the club is a member of um, Kingston uh, Voluntary Community Sectors Partnership Project Food for All, which is led uh, by Kingston Voluntary Action. Um, this project being funded by the government in partnership with the Lottery Community Fund is delivering activities specifically aimed to support local communities affected by food insecurity uh, during the COVID crisis. Um, in essence, the process works by food being donated to um, the club by supermarkets, um, including large donations almost daily from large um, local branches of Aldi, Tesco and Waitrose. Um, and then late in the evening, this is immediately distributed uh, to volunteers, um, to those most in need. Um, through existing local networks such as Kingston Churches Against Homelessness, uh, through Piper Hall and the Cambridge Road Estate, and in Surbiton, uh, regular donations are made to the Surbiton YMCA, uh, as well as to the Royal Star and Garter, uh, as well as around 40 local residents. Um, so the grant is to assist uh, the club with their ongoing work collecting and redistributing food. Um, they are running a, a food and goods for all project um, between November this year and April next, which is aiming to collect surplus food from a minimum of 12 locations each week. Um, this will result um, uh, in 288 collections over a six month period. Um, and they're estimating that their efforts will help feed 6,000 low income and vulnerable people. Um, the club are supported predominantly by a small group of hardworking volunteers, roughly six in number. And they intend to use this grant to train and support uh, another six volunteers and drivers to collect and drop off food. Um, the project is budgeted to cost um, three and a half thousand pounds, um, five thousand pounds, or five hundred pounds. My apologies, has already been secured by way of a grant from the Kingston Rotary Club. Um, I'd just like to briefly bring members' attention to the late material, and my apologies. I appreciate there's a fair amount of late material, uh, which is never um, a good thing, and it comes quite late in the day. But we had a number of um, outstanding questions at the point the agenda was published. So I did um, want to bring some of those results to the committee's attention. Um, appended to that um, is a breakdown, uh, a more complete breakdown of the applicant's budget. Um, as shown in that breakdown, the majority of this budget, um, uh, just under £2,000, is for the direct delivery costs. Um, so this is occurred collecting and delivering the food. Um, so as before, there's a small dedicated team um, who are working six days a week, uh, late into the evening. Um, some of the drivers, obviously, you know, starting they all start in different places, and some drive further than the others. Um, but they've taken uh, a calculation, or made a calculation, and they worked out the average distance split over their three cars for one mile a day. Um, and as you can see in the budget, and um, they've calculated these costs on a mileage rate of forty-five pence a mile. Um, the club are seeing an increasing need for food during this second lockdown. 
uh, and many of the users of the service have lost their income or cannot work at the moment. Um, and the club are anticipating this demand to only build when they run up to Christmas. Um, the club also report they're experiencing increasing levels of demand from the community centres they deliver to, such as the YMCA in Surbiton. Um, eight volunteers receive distribute food locally in Surbiton, including a daily delivery at 10.30 to the YMCA. Um, residents who, who, who like to help and can access the service can do so um, in a variety of different ways. They can um, visit the website, um, they can contact the club through social media, um, they can access food at the places where um, the club deliver it to, such as the YMCA, such as Kingston Churches Against Homeless, such as Piper Hall, um, and can also directly visit um, the main warehouse, the circuitry uh, in Verilins. And, and of course, there's always email as well. Um, in terms of the training that these new volunteers will undertake, the new volunteers will be taking a, a an online course in basic food hygiene and, and this is all about the you know the processing and handling of food um, uh, whereas their existing volunteers will undertake some refresher training um, in terms of the um, sort of overhead costs um, uh, cited in the budget we sought some clarification on this and the applicant has confirmed that this is to cover their business rates for the project's warehouse and office in Berylands for the duration of the project um, and this figure has been confirmed by our revenues and benefits team um, and, and they've also confirmed they have no objection to the grant money being used uh, in this way. Um, all, all the other uh, overhead costs, uh, including utilities, are being funded by the club um, using sources received um, funds received from other sources. Um, we also consulted um, the council's public health team on this application, um, including the council's uh, Kingston Stronger, to Stronger Together program team. Uh, this is the team that is. Um, coordinating um, the council's response to the pandemic um, and their um, feedback is set out there in the late material because it came in um, after the agenda was published um, but they welcomed the application um, as you can see in those quotes they um, uh, they cite it's a well-established and, and well-known um, and in the second paragraph um, their particular um, point of praise for the, the club's approach is the fact um, they offer fresh food and they offer to um, to anyone who presents um, as needing it um, without question, um, which both of these aspects are unique amongst that wider food group. Um, I appreciate that's a, that's a lot of me talking, Chair, but I'm happy to take any questions. That are there. Okay. Thank you, James, for that update. Um, I've got a, a few councillors who'd like to um, speak. So, um, Councillor Sumner, would you like to start? Thank you, Madam Chair. I would just like to um, urge all my fellow councillors to um, to vote in favour of this grant. I've been working with the Save the World Club, Des, Roland, uh, Tarek and James um, in, in trying to facilitate and bring forward something to enable them to keep, to keep going. For those of you who are not quite as familiar, not only do they provide the mosaics in um, Alexandra Ward and underneath the railway arches and in many other places, including Kingston Town Centre, not only have they done that, but for many years they've actually been um, taking actually taking food from places like Marks and Spencer's in Tolworth um, or the other or the other outlets that James mentioned and distributing them originally to um, to refugees actually, with the majority of the food was distributed to and the YMCA. Um, but not only have they done that, and then obviously when the pandemic pandemic hit they have worked tight and I mean tirelessly going out at one o'clock in the morning to collect food from places like Marks and Spencer's Tolworth um, and then taking it distributing it not only to those who who could means test their needs but also making it available to people who never thought they would need help before and there is no judgment they don't ask people to justify their need for additional help they just say this is this is food that the supermarkets are, are throwing out come and have some and for many people who perhaps in the past would have been too proud to ask for help it has actually got them through some leaner times during the covid pandemic and i have worked with them as i said and i would just urge you all to vote for it i think the you know the group has worked really really hard and um perhaps have been not overlooked because um, I think everybody who's pulled together during the pandemic has, has been has been recognised, but in the past they haven't always been an obvious um, community group. But since they're now getting more recognised, I would really urge you all to to um, 
to vote for this and um, and give them what they need to continue doing their amazing work, their brilliant work. They've never asked for help before. Um, many of them are funding their own petrol costs through their own expense. And we're talking every night they're going out and doing this. And so mm -hmm. please support this. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, I've got um, Councillor Gander. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I have absolutely no hesitation in, in supporting this application. Um, and thanks very much, James, for an excellent summary. Um, I think you really did, did their work justice with Councillor Sumner's um, supplementary comments there. Um, this is an extremely resourceful group of people um, who uh, have brought together lots of volunteers who give their time for free, give their skills for free. Um, this particular initiative is, uh, they've, they've ramped it up during COVID um, and worked tirelessly, as Councillor Summer said, with good spirit, um, you know, it, it's it, immensely um, personable people just really giving their time so willingly. It's, it's a very popular group, very well supported. As I say, they're, they're resourceful. It's not as if um, in the past when we've had applications come to us has been, um, we've hesitated because it, it seems as though they were just coming to the council and weren't looking at other sources, but, but they get um, support from all sorts of places, including for the van that they've recently got. Um, as I say, I have absolutely no hesitation in supporting this and I commend it to my, my colleagues. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Self. Thank, thank you very much, Chair. I'd, I'd like to concur and agree with the previous two speakers on what a, a, a great job to Save the World Club does. But in, generally, but in particular with the food distribution, and I think it highlights, if you like, it, um, the food that gets wasted probably nationally from supermarkets um, that that is uh, they that they can't or they that it's it's coming up to its sell by date or whatever and they just chuck it right and it's good food so i think the i think it it's an excellent charity that's doing a really good job in these hard times i i it was probably because of the questions i asked of the two co-chairs and the um neighborhood manager a week ago that we've got the additional late material and i do have a question maybe this should go to james um and i because it worries me somewhat that um i want to support this but on one bit mostly i want to support it 90 percent of me but i have this niggling doubt because of the figures that are in front of me and, it, and i think it's a pity in this particular case that the applicants actually can't i would have liked the applicants to have been in the meeting and along with the other grant ap applicants and we take grant applications early on in the meeting not to keep them till 10 o'clock at night but i'm just talking generally going forward to so um because i think i would have liked to have asked the the, the applicants directly um and that and because what I'm going to say now, uh, uh, no doubt they're listening, and I would, and I genuinely would like to ask them, and and I think they should have a chance to have their say. But there we go, that's not their fault. Um, so the report that we got a week ago, when the agenda was published, I'm looking at it now, says the vast majority of this funding, just under two thousand pounds, will be used to pay the volunteers' petrol costs. That set alarm bells ringing with me, because I did some calculations. Depending on what car you've got, a modern car, uh, when I say modern, anything in the last 10 years or so, you should get, you should be able, uh, um, based on petrol costs at the currently of £1.15 a, uh, a litre, um, it works out to about 13 pence a mile. Now, that can be a bit more than that, it can be a bit less than that, but that's, a, that's the sort of ballpark figure. 13 pence a mile for petrol. So I did the I did the calculations based on the two thousand pounds and thought, blimey, that doing a lot of mileage. That is, this is not saving the world. This is polluting Surbiton. Now, we've now got the figures in front of me. Thanks, James. And it says that the, the claim per mile is forty five pence per mile. Not for, so. That's not petrol. That's about um, just over three times the cost of the petrol. 
and I don't and, and obviously if you're using a car you get wear and tear you might get a puncture like I've just had and you have to get your puncture repaired and so on so there's ongoing costs but but the but the cost per car per car I'm on now for the um for the period concerned for the six months this is not for a year this is for the six months that the application is for the cost per car for petrol I worked out at about 187 pounds. That could be 200 pounds if you've got an older, less um, less efficient car, and that means there's 460 pounds for other car costs. Um, 460 pounds, as I say, depending on the petrol, that could be 440. It could be 480, but it's that sort of 450, that sort of thing, which is about 900 or over 900 pounds on an annual basis. And I've got an issue with that because these are volunteers and yet they're claiming this is in addition to running for the running of the car. And now, now charities can, you can, charities are, are quite entitled to employ staff and pay staff for their time. I've got no issue with that whatsoever. Um, but I do think we should be clear on what we're funding. And this, it did initially say it was for petrol costs, but it's not for petrol costs, it's for car costs, and it's for running a car. 45 pence is probably what you get if you work for a company and you use for a car, and you use your car, but this is not a company, this is a charity. So, um, and I assume this is just in Surbiton neighbourhood, and so an allied question to that is, are they going to the other three neighbourhoods for funding? Because this is a borough-wide facility as far, or do they do they focus on Surbiton? I would have asked them this directly, but um, but I thought it was a borough-wide facility. It certainly, it is certainly, it's certainly not just Surbiton because it mentions Piper Hall in the main report, Paul, which is which is good. I'm sorry, I think that's it's good. But so you can see where I'm coming from. So um, I don't know whether James, if you've got any more information that the Save the World Club's provided to you, um, but I just think we need to be dead clear what we're funding. Yeah, thank you, Chair. You're happy for me to take that one. Um, yes, you're absolutely right. Um, it was poor drafting in that paragraph. It should refer to mileage rather than just petrol costs. So I do apologise for that. And I'm glad it's been clarified in the late material. Um, yes, they operate uh, borough-wide. Uh, they are a borough-wide charity, and they even go and collect um, some of their produce. That's why they do so many miles and further afield as well. So um, they, um, they distribute in the borough. They collect groceries from all over the capital and beyond. Um, in terms of what this grant money is being used for, it is not 100% Surbiton. Um, a lot of this is being linked to the Surbiton Neighbour Committee because they are based here. Um, and a lot of it is based on need. Um, so a significant amount of it, as we can see in the report, is going to the YMCA. Um, it is going to support Surbiton residents. Um, those numbers are a little bit difficult to tie down exactly because some weeks, you know, um, 20 residents may collect it from the YMCA, whereas the next week it may be five or ten. Um, but no, uh, it's not solely for the neighbourhood, but the um, officers were content that the charity being based in the neighbourhood um, and with a significant number of the users being with the neighbourhood, um, that we could bring it forward for your consideration. Okay, um, thank, thank you for that, uh, James. Um, can I uh, move on to Councillor Yuganathan? Hello, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. I know I keep in quiet. I don't want to take any of your time. It's already 10 past uh, 3 past 10. Yep. Having said that, I know this uh, in the World Club since 2000, and I used them as my, when I was a mayor, they were my local charity. They have done an example, like Sharon was talking about Mosaic as well. I think to the question what uh, Malcolm asked, I think that is a relevant question he has to ask. Yes, they are covering the whole of the borough. And I know them very well indeed since 2000. And uh, I, as I said to you, that was my local charity. And they are covering not only in Surbiton, mainly by MCA. And uh, you know, I think one of the things is at this moment as a pandemic is, is a serious issue. And if you just imagine that if you want to bring everybody to we need to bring them in and i think you said it chair at a time so that they will tell us how they are doing it you see like our victoria friends of victoria recreation ground we know them they've been doing an excellent job and we wanted to bring the communities together we are working on a very different line having said that when i am in favor of that one i don't want to repeat most of the things what the amazing councillors uh, were talking 
and uh, I can talk for a long time, and I certainly would like to uh, end those uh, uh, things, and uh, we like to work closer, and now they are very much close to Malcolm, <laughs> Beryl and uh, they are pretty good, I know this, and I know everyone. But having said that one, uh, at this moment in time, we need to move that way. I think I quite agree with you when the situation gets better. We would rather like to, I like to have a meeting, not virtual, full, so I can see people and I can talk to them effectively. Through this way, it's very difficult. But uh, at this pandemic basis, we have to do our best. And I think at this moment in time, they are doing an excellent job covering the whole of the borough. And the Save the World Club has been in existence something like much about 35, 40 years. And uh, they have got my names everywhere, you see, when I was a uh, mayor. So all I can say is thank you very much. And I will be supporting that. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you. Um, I'm going to, um, we're allocating just to sort of, I don't, as the time is getting, is moving on, and I know there's a few people who want to talk, but if we can just um, bear that in mind when we're, we're making our, our comments now. So, um, Councillor uh, White, would you like to make some comments? Thank you very much. Um, a big thank you to Malcolm because I do think that sometimes we don't scrutinise as uh, because as much as we should because we understand where where it's all coming from that the uh, the the enthusiasm and and the goodwill of everybody. So I think um, really grateful to Malcolm for scrutinising this. I just wanted to say that yes, I, I would say that petrol and mileage um, it should be mileage costs in my charity um, where I have a lot of volunteers. We pay forty six pence per mile to our volunteers okay thank thank you um and um i know you know you want to comment uh councillor sumner but um i i'm not i'm not sure um if, if you can just make it very quick because i i you have spoken already and i and the time is moving on so we could just do a quick comment that'd be great thanks yeah it's obviously um Tarek, des and the rest of save the world club are not here Mm. to respond to councillor south yeah and mm. so i'd just like to just for a moment just put some balance on this um i do appreciate what you're saying about whether things go across neighborhood boundaries but i'd like to remind the committee that certainly within the last year they have all um including councillor south supported applications from places which are not actually even based in surbiton we had the hook marching band who wanted some cloaks and we all supported that Amazing charity. Um, the last application was from a, the, the Christian Aid charity who are looking at giving people help with, uh, with, with that are going through the need debt counselling. None of that was solely within Surbiton. So what I would I would beseech to Councillor South is to actually perhaps put aside that argument. 45 pence per mile, if you have a look on the Inland Revenue website, is probably a standard rate in terms of tax. These are volunteers. They do a lot for the community. In terms of sustainability, I'm sure they would all love to have electric cars to deliver their, their food, but they can't afford that. Um, they do, from Berrylands, have a repair shop. Anyone can go at any time in the day, take your kettle, take your toaster, they will repair it for you for free, so you don't have to buy a new one. Um, so I would consider this to be actually one of the most sustainable charities in, in the borough, and I'm sure Councillor Gander would agree. So, Councillor Self, I recognise your the, and it's great that you're scrutinizing figures. I often do the same myself, but in here, I feel on this one, I, I really feel that we should be supporting this amazing charity and, and actually helping Des, Kay and Roland do more of what they're doing better. Thank you. Okay. Um, Councillor Chair, have you got anything more to add or shall we just, is there something that you really want to say or will we move to the, the vote? I'm actually fine, Chair, thank yeah. you. Okay, that's fine. Because I mean, we have, I think we've had um, quite a lot of, of, of um, it's been really good. Uh, and it is good that we're scrutinising and looking at it. And as I say, I would, um, I, I would definitely we would as um, chairs would like to, um, to, to bring back um, uh, to, to see what the outcomes are and to hear more about the, the, the great work that they're doing. So, so thank you, everyone for that contribution. Can I now move this? Um, uh, amount um, at this grant application of the three thousand um, pounds. Would someone like to um, second that, Councillor Sumner? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll put you as uh, seconding it. Your hand went up first that I saw. Um, right, and and do do we are are we uh, wanting to take it to a vote? If you want to um, put it in the chat box. Um, 
Okay, Mark, Mark has um, said that he would like to abstain. Um, would do, um, will we, um, is everyone else, uh, or do we, do we want to do a named roll call? Martin, would you like? I mean, I'm not seeing anybody else say anything, but I've got just yeah, in the chat yeah, box. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, um, to accept the, the vote with the council of self abstaining and the rest of the members voting in favour, unless anyone right. is indicating otherwise. No, the, nobody else has indicated yet, so I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take that as, uh, as it. All right, thank you. Okay, um, so now we'll go on to to the the next item, which is um, the the Christmas light, uh, tree and lights for um, uh, the the centre of Surbiton. Um, in previous years, we have done this, um, and and um, what we've got is um, uh, what we've brought here is um, probably in reflection might, might have been easier just to have um, not had um, three options but and um, probably what I, what I was feeling I was going to say was that I know that this is a difficult time for everybody um, and the shops of some or some are open some are not and you know and and, and who knows what um, the situation is going forward but we're expecting obviously at the beginning of December we will come out of, of this current situ, situation of, of, of lockdown. Um, I probably, um, uh, I would say we've got the three options, whether it be a tree only, um, a tree with with um, lights that would just be around about the the, um, the roundabout to sort of illuminate that, that area and give a sort of um, a look of, of Christmas cheer. Um, and and, um, and that's sort of in line with what we, we voted on last year, agreed to last year. Um, and, and then there's a third option. So I, I realise that people, um, that uh, the, members may well want to talk on this, but I, I'm proposing that we, um, if um, unless I hear from otherwise, that we, we go with option two, that's what I'm moving. Um, but if I, I'm happy to also hear what everybody's got to, to say. So I'll leave, um, I've got some, a couple of people want to talk. So let's um, let's hear what uh, we've got to say and then we'll take it from there. Um, Councillor Sumner. Uh, very, very briefly, I think with it we should support a, to whatever financial level that we can um, afford um, and perhaps James is able to, to give some guidance on that. Um, I think the businesses in Surbiton have taken such a hit, but I would also like to say it's still disappointing that we're two and a half years in and none of us have been able to come up with an amazing scheme for Tolworth yet. Um, and, and we have to remember Tolworth as it's still its own district shopping centre. I feel it is a disappointment that we've not been able to get to that. And I would um, I would love to reach out to my wall colleagues and say, can we work on a scheme for next year, please, for Tolworth and, and get something truly amazing for Tolworth as well as Serbiton. But that's, that's all I need to say. Thank you. OK, thank you for that. Um, Councillor of White. Thank you very much. Just to say, I completely agree with option two. I think it's incredibly important that we, um, whilst it's more money than option one, but we have to look after the emotional well-being of absolutely everybody, the mental health of all our residents. And it will, in these times, just make us feel a little bit better walking up a road with Christmas lights. Thanks. OK, thank, thank you for those comments. Um, has anyone else got anything they would uh, like to contribute here? So, so, so are we happy to to um, agree um, to go forward with um, option two. Um, and uh, so very briefly, um, yeah. just to occur, it's our intention of option two this year, which is very similar in terms of the number of columns to last year, is to group them more centrally. Mm -hmm. um, last year, they were quite disparate down, down the street. They didn't make much of a display because we spread them out all along Victoria Road. So the intention would be of option two this year is to have the last slightly larger tree in the roundabout and to bring all those column lights closer to the roundabout to make more of a, a display um, so it has more of an impact. Thank you, Jim. OK, thank you for that uh, input. Um, Councillor Self. Thank you, Chair. Um, having been very closely, I suppose, involved in Christmas festivities and lights in Surbiton Town Centre in the past, um i could i would just just got a comment that uh well i could i'll no, start just sort of saying i could easily be persuaded to vote for option three but equally i will vote for option two to move things along i mean by default if i'm going to vote for option two i would support option two so, sorry if i'm if i'm prepared to support option three sort of by default i'll support option two if that's the 
consensus, if you see what I mean. Having been involved with it closely in the past, I'm aware of the traders around the town centre and in particularly those in Brighton Road who feel sometimes disenfranchised from the the shops and businesses uh, around the round up the, the roundabout end um, and in at the end of Victoria Road. So that's my my only concern about option two is and I, and I support it absolutely is that Brighton Road doesn't get anything from this and we got. Brighton Road shopkeepers, businesses paying their business rates, and clearly a lot of those shops are shut at the moment. Um, we know obviously why, but they're in their so this is their key pre, 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 key pre Christmas period, and and it's obviously a national thing. Why we know what well, it's more than that, but we know why the shops are shut now, which is unfortunate. So I'd like to support them as much as at all uh, as possible. Um, so I'm, I'm a little concerned about just grouping them. I, I can understand the, the the wish to group them around the roundabout end, but it it does mean that the independent shops I'm thinking of in particular, Regency Bookshop, but all the all sorts of others down the other end of Victoria Road and into Brighton Road don't sort of get a look in. So I just pass that as a comment. And, and that's why I would probably go for option three, but there you go. Thanks. Okay. That, thank, thank you. And is and anyone else like to, to comment? Uh, nope, nope, doesn't look like it. So, so are we um, wanting to 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 vote because we, you know, we have got options and we've also got some somewhere in between as well. So, uh, so it doesn't need to. Um, uh, we don't need to go with just option um, two. Um, Councillor Sumner. Uh, thank you for indulging me, Madam Chair. I would just like to support what um, Councillor Sell said. And if we have if we have the money in the bank to do it, I think that actually we should support more heavily this year i think we can all accept it's been a difficult year for everyone and i fully take on councillor self's um comments regarding brighton road i think we can all agree that and i think place all the businesses are having a terrible time and that perhaps if, if there is money in the bank then i would be happy to support um councillor self's proposal to go for option three okay thank you um councillor self do you want to follow up i'll say it's a quick follow-up I, I'm absolutely if if whatever we do, I think businesses are having a tough time this year. So what I'm gonna say does not apply to this year and it's too late anyway. But going forward, I do think we should look for I hope the neighborhood manager, James Geach, would be able to coordinate next year along with the members um exploring the possibility of and which we've done in the past. With, with part success of getting businesses to contribute to the Christmas lights. Uh, and if you work, I, I've done the calculations in the past, I haven't got them in front of me now, but each business only has to contribute a relatively small amount to build up to a sufficient to the, you know, the 12,000 or whatever. Um, that, that's, that's a discussion for another time, I know. And I think, oh, I said a quick follow up. So, so I just leave that thought that if, if we put this money in this year, I'm not saying that we should do it forevermore. I think we, I think the businesses could contribute, with the caveat that at the moment with COVID, they're having a tough time. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going down that route right now. Thanks. Okay. Um, can I ask James um, then if if we have the the fifty column lights, how much more coverage would that be um, for the lamp posts? To, would you say in comparison? I mean, I know obviously it's, it's going to be a lot more columns, but I'm just into just the feel of 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 the um, the number of of because you'll um, probably know how many of the columns can be used. Yeah, uh, so it's not quite total coverage. You won't do every column, um, and that's because not every column can be used. It's double the amount of last year. So mm -hmm. last year we managed to get sort of uh, clusters all the way down Victoria Road and on the end by Brighton Road. So it would be double that coverage. It would be almost every column that we can make use of along the road. Okay. Um, uh, Councillor Folder hughes um, Well, I... I came into this discussion with an open mind, actually, between two and three. I definitely did want 
Christmas lights of some description, and I definitely wanted a tree, and that was my basic position. Um, having thought about this a little more carefully, I am persuaded that we could do three, just because if we look at the amount of our council award funding that we have spent this year, um, we haven't spent a great deal of it. And if we look at the kinds of things that we normally spend um, our council award funding on, they tend to be things like, for example, last year we funded the um, Serbs and Marching Band. Um, we tend to fund things like the Serbs and Boxing Club. We're looking at these community organisations that do things as a group. I don't think actually that those, those groups are going to be doing much of that sort of stuff before April. I think we can afford to go for option three this year because it's not like there's some it's not like we're going to get applications later on in the year for the sorts of things that we normally fund and um, my concern coming into the meeting was whether we would get applications for um uh, from organizations to, to to support them through covid which is why i was a bit tentative but actually i don't think we are seeing that i don't i don't know if, if that's your perspective as co-chairs but i don't think we are seeing a huge flurry of uh, voluntary organizations coming to this part of funding for money so i think we can afford to do free and i think um free would be the best option for service in town center and actually during covid um i just think when i was a kid i loved christmas lights and it's been a pretty rough year for kids across the borough so i think we should i think we should yeah. plug free Okay, um, thank you. Um, so, so James, can I just um, confirm if we do do um, the fifty, um, that would that help, would that go all the way down and onto Brighton Road, or would it just be the the main high street? It would be enough column displays to go all the way down the road and turning the corner. Right, um, okay. There are some columns that aren't currently in use, so it won't yeah. be every single column, um, right. but it certainly give you a very good spread down the road. Okay. Um, that's that's fine. Well, um, I think I, I I get a sense from the meeting that you know we were certainly were edging towards um two, two was in the middle and and three seems to be um where I'm getting a lot of comments on that. So I do, um, is it better that we perhaps just vote on on that one now? I know uh, Sheila, you've got your hand up, but um, would you want to say something quickly because it's um yeah. Just very, just very quickly, Madam Chair, I was just thinking that if 50 is going to cover every single post or available post, uh, can't we then put a few up in Tolworth then, if that's the case, if uh, we've never done anything there before? I, I don't know. I'm no. just uh, making a suggestion whether uh, some of the lights could go there, at least to brighten that area up also, because there are shops there. And uh, I can't see why we shouldn't do something with these lights right to you know we don't need 50 for brighton and victoria i, I don't um, know what the how the figures work but you know i know I, think, no um, I know there's lots of, lots of people are waving at me but i'm probably just going to stick with it, it has to be in the chat um and, but i'm just going to go to james because the, the, the issue with doing something like that is i don't know whether the the columns of, are fitted with them which would then make the cost different as well so so i'm not saying no to it i'm just saying that i, I i'd probably just need to um just wanting to, to check with james what 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 do you think james yeah, no, uh, thank you, Chair. You're absolutely right. And we enjoy the infrastructure um, and the columns that we have in Victoria Road and Brighton Road. Um, unfortunately, we don't enjoy those same power supplies on the Tolworth Broadway uh, or anywhere else in Tolworth. Um, so these columns are um, tried and tested. We know they've got the right fittings, so that they work. Um, there'll be additional work to put them elsewhere. Okay. Um, so I'm thinking there are one or two now um, names have come in. Um, I think I. Um, Probably we got. I'll I'll take up the Tallworth um uh, councillors because they are or sorry the Alexandra Ward councillors because they think it. My slight thing I, I probably would like to hear from you because I, I know that we only have one side of Tallworth Broadway, so I'm that's why I'm I, I knew though that we need to link up with with um uh, you know sort of uh, the who grise side as well. Um, so that's my slight reservation about about doing this now. But if um Councillor Ford refused, have you got something you want to say? Yeah, so um, as James said, we've we've looked into this before. It's the infrastructure on the Broadway which prevents us from doing um, lights in the same way that we do in Surbiton. Um, however, I've just come up with a, a potential solution off the top of my head. Um, if we could look to work with the south of the borough neighbourhood to um, put money in for a tree um, on Prince's at the bottom of Prince's Avenue, like we did last year, um, that might be. 
uh, that might be a solution. So we could provisionally, um, depending on what Lorraine and myself and the borough councillors do, allocate some of our funding to go towards that. That might that might be helpful. But I, again, I, I, without seeing the figures in front of me, I don't know whether that's a viable solution. Yeah. Um, well, I think um, I'm prepared. I think J James has come in with something. I'm prepared to, um, out of what I actually I was going to say um, before we had this additional um, thing was that I think it is certainly something that um, the co um, with myself and Anita, we should really look at for next year, looking at um, certainly looking at how we can engage with with the shops in Tolworth and, um, you know, in various bits, Berrylands, different bits of the borough as to how we can actually get them to to come together um, and, and, and get some more Christmas lights. I think we haven't got the um, not having the details and certainly not having spoken to South of the borough i think it'd be difficult for us to do that but we, it isn't um and it's then it's a question of the time before but we've still got another meeting in december where we could look at this so i'm probably just if we could just maybe um for this evening look at the subreson ones but agree that um i would happy to happily uh, that, um, and and council shaper is um sh nodding as well if we can meet up with the the um with the alex uh councillors, either hand of councillors, to, to discuss this in the interim and, and, and come up with a plan, see what's possible. Would that would that suffice? Okay. All right then. So so we vote now go to the, the um consideration of um where we are. Um I had already put forward a, a motion of for the, the option two. Um I probably will now change that to I put forward a mo motion for um a proposal of option three. And is, would anyone like to second that? Councillor Shaper, and and would, do we want to have a vote on this, or are we pre happy to accept that? I can't see anyone in the, in the chat saying to the contrary. So, okay, that's great, and and I, I agree to that. If we can meet up, um, to organise something offline to to meet up and discuss um Tolworth. Thank you, thank you. All right, that's so that's that one c complete. Um, the final bit, J James, do you want to introduce the the next piece on on the um the with the the, the, the ward councillor yes i'm very happy to do so chair yeah. um so um this is about um, the annual review of council award funding so council award funding has been around for some time it was first introduced in 2016-17 uh, and as the committee are well aware it's for that flexible and small and timely awards for local initiatives um when this scheme was first introduced these funds were allocated individually by ward councillors to local projects However, at the start of the 2019-20 year, as part of the introduction of the current iteration of the Community Grants Programme, neighbour committees were given the opportunity to collectively pool this resource in order to, for it to be allocated by the neighbour committee. Um, as we know, this is an approach that was adopted by Serbton um, last year, when, was it, when it agreed this process. Um, when it agreed this process last year, the committee also agreed that it would be reviewed annually at the start of each municipal year. Uh, as this is the first meeting of this year, which has not been reserved exclusively for planning applications or urgent matters, it's the committee's first opportunity to review these arrangements. So therefore, the committee has the opportunity to revert to the previous iteration of the scheme if it wishes to do so. Um, Serbton is the only neighbourhood committee that has adopted this approach. Um, it's worth mentioning that all the other neighbourhoods currently allocate it um, as the scheme was first introduced. Okay. Um... So, so for me, I would just like to say that um, uh, Council Shaper and I have been working on a community plan for Surbiton, um, and 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 appreciate that we haven't um, brought this forward. It should have been um, done annually, and I think it was it was first done in um, March two thousand and nineteen, and we probably should have done it in March, which um, was just when the the pandemic um, started. So we haven't uh, had an opportunity to look at this. Um, so, so my proposal was that we just stick with what we. We are and um, where we are and that we bring forward um, for this municipal year and then when, when we have a discussion um, I, and I'm happy to do this um, out of this meeting with Councillor Sumner to, to discuss um, you know for next year that we look at look at this um, uh, and that we bring forward both things so we bring forward the plan and we bring uh, and, and we revisit it um, um, either at um, after the municipal year starts, um, which would be July or or prior to that. But we are going to be bringing forward our plan in um, in in hopefully in the, in the January meeting. Um, so that's it was just to give a little bit of a, a side to that. So um, I, and I've seen in the chat that um, Councillor Sumner would like to speak on this. Um, but if so, if you'd like to have a brief comment, then that's great. 
I would, I would, sorry, I've, I've just realized I've missed out some people. So sorry about that. I've just realized that um, I've gone too far down my list. It was actually Councillor White's first on my list, then Councillor Folder Hughes, and I'm sorry, Councillor Sumner, you're third on that list, but I apologize. That was me not looking down my list properly. But, uh, Councillor White. Thank you. Actually, Alison, um, I was just going to say what you said. Uh, it's far too late in the year to, to change. Let's just carry on. But let's have a really, really good look and uh, proper review on how, how we do this going forward. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Folder Hughes. Again, I um, pretty much echo what Diane's just said. Uh, the only thing I would add is it would be nice if we could explore some kind of hybrid model. I think it's good for these big decisions like the Christmas lights that we've just discussed, that we have these discussions in public in an open, fair and transparent way. Um, I think where the previous systems lagged is where we had small applications for sort of two or three hundred pounds that happened to come to the full committee. That doesn't work. Um, but again, again, I think this this needs some for a force and we need to think about it in context with the neighbourhood plan and actually set some metrics and key deliverables for how we're using this money um, mm -hmm. for, for next year. So I, I, I agree with what, what you're saying, that it needs to be thought through rather than um, us changing it ad hoc towards the end of the year. Okay. Councillor Sumner. Yeah, just briefly, um, I, was, I, 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 I think I brought this up at the last committee meeting where we discussed neighborhood grants and pointed out that this is due for review and I was surprised it wasn't on the agenda. Um, I, I was against pooling the, the grants because I did. I do think it takes away that responsive, the, the responsive element um, for, for those smaller community groups. I, I still do feel that. I do accept that it's too late in the day to change it now and it would be unfair to change it now. Um, but I would and I, I would like to echo what my fellow ward councillor said about um, about coming up with a hybrid model, which is what I suggested originally when this was originally discussed and no one was willing to support me. So I'm really pleased that Councillor Folder Hughes is willing to support me on coming up with some hybrid model now um, moving forward. Because I think the problem we've had is, as we've seen, is at the moment people are not able to come and present their ideas. And I thought, and, and so we're not able to engage with people properly. So I welcome this coming forward at the most early or earliest opportunity for full discussion. Thank you. Okay. No, I'm, I'm happy to take that forward um, and, and, ha and have an early discussion on that. Um, it's probably um, a good idea if we could have um, a sort of maybe of a subgroup of, of looking at this. So so we'll look at that and, 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 and bring that back. But um, as far as it's concerned for the just to affirm that for this year, we will stick um, with what we've got, which would be, be bringing them together and, and agreeing it at the committee. Um, then, and, and are we happy to to go go ahead? I've got someone who would second second that. Councillor okay, so Yoganathan, um, do we need to have a, a vote on that, or are we happy to accept that? Yep, yeah, looks like it's all accepted. Great, thank you very much. So um, that that's agreed, and, and 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 that we will bring this back. So Martin, if you can keep that, um, add that to our, our work plan that that we bring, make sure that we have a date for for bringing that back. And we'll yeah, so I'll add that. that. Yeah, thank you. Um, so the late time is uh, moving on. I don't know whether we want, we've got a few more items um, on the agenda, which we can probably. I, I'm not sure that they will take very long, but we could also have a comfort break. I, I'm I'm in 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 your hands. If anyone wants to say in in the chat box if they would like to have a comfort break for um, for ten minutes, um, or we, or we just carry on. I'm not seeing anybody saying anything so we'll just carry on um right so so move on to item eight on the agenda which is the neighborhood managers um report james would you like to present this yes thank you chair um i just want to highlight two things really um as a result of the second lockdown um the first of which is the work of the kingston stronger together hub and second is a quick update on the work the rangers have been doing as part of the COVID response um so I'd just like to remind uh, residents and members that um, during lockdown, there's a variety of support available through the Kingston Stronger Together Hub. And this includes information and advice on staying fit and well through the current situation, as well as support to access food, um, collecting medicine uh, and other essential items, as well as a befriending service, mental health support and the ability to refer people uh, to professional services. Um, so anyone who needs this help, they can get it by either um, going to the council's website and completing a form there or simply by calling the council on the main switchboard which is 0208 547 
5000. Um, the second thing I just wanted to bring to members' attention is the work that Rangers have been doing throughout the pandemic. Um, they've been extremely busy in recent months, so they've been working at the centre of the council's response. Um, they've been collecting and delivering PPE all across the borough and further beyond, as well as food donations from across London, um, supporting our vulnerable residents with shopping prescription deliveries and also delivering a number of wellbeing boxes. Um, two of the team were also deployed to support the council's bereavement services. Um, the team have also been supporting the resilience planning team with the opening and closing of mobile testing units in Kingston. Um, and also in the town centre, they've been helping the PP pop-up store in Farrant Street. Um, they've also been supporting the Kingston and Sutton shared environmental services uh, with the NHS COVID-19 QR code business engagement work um, and many other jobs aside, collecting and delivering things all across the borough on behalf of the council during the pandemic. Um, so I just want to take the opportunity to celebrate their work. Um, the team have, um, well, well, we're starting to return to their business as usual jobs. Um, some of those have now gone back in lockdown two to two of these Kingston Stronger Together Hub activities. Um, They've been working very hard to catch up those who have returned. Um, we have seen um, uh, growth in graffiti across the borough, uh, especially in Kingston Town, but certainly in Surbiton as well, as many members will know along Surbiton. So they've been working on that backlog as well. Um, so those are two things I, I particularly wanted to bring to members' attention. So thank you, Chair. Thank you for that update, James. And, and yes, we'd just like to, to thank um, all, all our officers who've been working incredibly hard in various um, reassignments into hubs and, and, and also uh, to, to our rangers. Um, it's again something I think that it's great to get the update from you on, on what, what the rangers are doing. And, 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 and I think that would be a, a useful addition to um, to um, the, the, the neighbourhood managers report and, and, and maybe even the rangers coming along to to um, um, speak at one of the committees. I'll certainly extend the invitation. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right. So if we can now move on to um, item uh, nine, that which is the Ditton Road uh, consultation, um, which is in um, Appendix C in, in our papers. Um, I um, would like to say the recommendation on this report is, is, is set out on an page C1 and I formally move um, that uh, from the chair um, and, and then we can vote on it um, after this uh, committee has had some discussion on it. Is anyone, would anyone like to second that motion? Um, Councillor Self, thank you. Um, so um, Eunice, uh, would you like to introduce the report? Okay, yeah, thank you, Chair. I will. Thanks. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, in January this year, I brought a report to the committee about the healthy street, where I put a number of recommendations. As a part of the recommendation, I recommend some uh, life segregated cycling scheme to be introduced in Britain Road. And at that time, members agreed for me to send an information letter to residents to inform them of that. Uh, in March 2020, I sent the information letter, uh, but uh, unfortunately, we received a lot of uh, comment back and objection from uh, residents not happy with uh, the scheme because it has been, uh, you know, lost parking, and uh, they want to be consulted, not just to be informed. So I discussed that with the ward members and the chair, and at that time, uh, ward members and the chair reached a decision, which is to consult the resident. And I put the three options, and it was option one, which is to consult them on the light segregated, which means we have the curb, then we have cycling facility, then we have a buffer, then we have a parking. And the purpose of introducing such a scheme was to reduce the width of the carriageway so visually, so we'll, add, we'll reduce the speeding where the residents were raising a lot of concern about speeding and food traffic. Then we asked the resident to go for option two, which I thought we need to put options on the, on the questionnaire, and option two, which is to go for a certain facility uh, outside the parking car. So we'll have a curb and we'll have the parking car, then we'll have the cycling uh, facilities. 
then members felt they want to give the opportunity to the residents as well to you know, leave things as it is and do nothing. So I put all these questions to the resident. Uh, I've delivered 108 letters to the resident of Tipton Road. I had back 46. Actually, it's not bad. It's about 43% response rate. It's a quite high number of response rate. But if you look to the result in front of you, for option one, which is the light segregated, which is will have the cycling facility next to the curb, I had 14 responses said yes, and 20 uh, and 29 said no, and others three. Then we come to option two, which is to put the cycling facility outside the parking bay. We have four said yes, 37 said no, and others is three. Then we come to the last option, which is really is leave things as it is. And we have 24 said yes, and 17 said no. But if you look into the analysis of the data, you'll find out of this, we have the 22 residents that said the problem in their road is the speeding. 16 said the problem in their road is parking. 19, they said the problem in their road is through traffic. And 14 is none. They don't have problem in their road. I know in Titan Road we have been having, we had workshops before even the history street, and members received a lot of requests from the residents asking them to do something in Titan Road because they felt it's a speed issue. If you go through the comment, the comment is really various. There is support, and there are some people who doesn't support the scheme. And some of them, they want us to remove the speed cushions because they think the speed cushions cause them vibration, and sometimes when a skip or LGV goes over it in night time, cause them to wake up during night time. So we have a lot of a lot of information received, but on balance, uh, we felt for members is to note this report and secondly is really there is no any full support in any of these options and our recommendation is to do nothing then i will inform the resident of your decision uh, i'm happy to have any question chair you are any mute chair Noise. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I was there was a no background noise and I was scared it was me. Um, so, um, yeah, so um, thank you very much for, for, for the um, report. Um, is there anyone that would like to, to speak on this? Or ask Eunice any questions? Uh, Councillor Gander. Um, just a quick question, and then I, I do have um, some things I want to say. Um, Eunice, was the the healthy street? Um, did that come out of the the survey? So the, yes, it was the survey that was done of the whole area, um, which looked as far as a broad, nearly like hook roundabout and the A3, and went all the way up to Oak Hill. Um, and this came out of that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yes, it is. Um, so, yes, um, Chair, I, I've got um, some comments um, that I want to make as, as a ward councillor, but also as um, a portfolio holder for environment and sustainable transport. Um, so, uh, with your indulgence, um, it might go on a little bit, but I promise it won't be that long um, at this time of, of night. But I do have some things that I'd like to say. Um, I, I, as Eunice has explained very well where we where we got to with this, um, and uh, as ward councillors and, and, and my fellow count, ward councillors may I wish to speak on this, we did think it was the right idea to go um, back to residents, uh, to go to residents and to allow them to complete a questionnaire, uh, a consultation, and the. I found most interesting um, the and, and quite bewildering 
the variety of responses that we saw. I read every single one. Um, and the, the mo there were quite a lot that contradicted each other. So it just goes to show, you know, it, it can be quite a subjective thing that we're looking at here. So I'll give you a couple of examples. We never see cyclists. Um, uh, again, with the pandemic, we see lots more cyclists. Cyclists are fine. Um, my wife is scared to cycle. Um, there were comments such as, um, we don't want council tax used for this, um, and we should feed hungry children instead. Uh, well, well, on those two, it, it's not council tax, it's, um, it's money from TfL, and it, it's money from TfL that is for people's health, um, to encourage cycling and walking, to fight obesity, uh, to reduce the number of cars, uh, reduce air pollution, etc. Um, so it is also for healthy outcomes as well. And, and of course, um, fortunately, it's not binary. You know, we, we're not doing this at the expense of hungry children. Uh, so, for example, our, this council has stepped forward on that and vulnerable children are getting full vouchers over the half term um, for food, um, food vouchers. So... Those are, the, those are some of the things I, I pulled out. So, as I said, it's quite a bewildering variety of responses. Um, there was also um, a comment which um, jumped out at me, um, which said uh, cyclists would be much better, much safer and better directed down St. Matthew's Drive, where there are no parked cars to conflict with them. I can't understand why this is not being considered, although I have a strong suspicion now, I have a strong suspicion why that comment was made. Um, I live in St. Matthew's Avenue. I hope I'm wrong. Um, I support everyone's right to make comments about um, what would work, what wouldn't work in their opinions. Um, but I do draw the line at uh, calling into question my integrity. Um, I'm happy to make that, um, that comment, which is in the public domain since it's in the papers, even bigger because I would I like to do that in order to refute that I would um, in any way interfere with the decision making to benefit myself. But moreover, I want to make it absolutely clear that I would welcome cycle friendly infrastructure anywhere and um, if appropriate in my road. Now, going back, to uh, whether it would work or wouldn't work. I personally, I don't think it's on the desire line uh, for a lot of um, cycling, but actually I think it could be useful to have more cycling infrastructure in St. Matthews Avenue. But putting that aside uh, and um, returning to some of the other comments, as Eunice has mentioned, um, resident parking is a big issue in um, Ditton Road. Um, we know that there's commuter parking um, because it is the first uncontrolled road um, south, if you like, as you keep going south. Um, so there is, a, there is a big demand um, for the available parking. And it was the, the number of parking spaces, I think, which originally wasn't known to the ward councillors. We, we didn't um, ask the right question. I'll hold up my hand, should have asked. Um, but that was not known to us at first. And it, in such a such a road with the demand from the commuter parking which takes up spaces, that is a big uh, factor. Um, I personally would like to see, um, I, I think this scheme would have worked well, but it, um, it is something that we, we see is not palatable to lose that parking and I accept that. Um, I feel sorry for the 14 who would really support this, you know, that's a significant number in, in a street this, this long, 108 houses, 108 were delivered and 14 would really strongly support this. I, I think it was a bold plan. Um, it's been rejected by local residents and, and I think that's why we would propose that um, it doesn't go forward at this stage. We will continue to look at ways to reduce the speeding. I think most people agree that um, the speeding, um, intermittent speeding, some people are fine and then others are just 
quite manic down there. Um, we'll have to look at different ways. Um, I think it's a shame that we're not getting um, cycling infrastructure in there because it would be a useful link across from Berrylands, across from, we're going to have the infrastructure on your road, across to the country end of Ditton Road, as I call it. Um, but uh, I think that's, that's where we are and that's where I'd like to leave it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, Councillor Sumner? Um, sorry, Chair, I couldn't find the button to unmute. Um, it's, it's a really brief thing. It's not really my question. It's more a question from a resident who was unable, who wasn't allowed to speak tonight. So she asked me if I would ask the question on her behalf. But before I can do that, can I just reach out to Councillor Gander and say I'm really sorry that 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 someone has made a comment that's made you made you that upset. I think obviously it's really difficult sometimes being a counsellor and, you know, especially when, you, when you're putting yourself out there in, in such a way. So I'd just like to reach out and say, I feel that it's it's a shame that you, that you feel that, that a comment has so personally hurt you. Um, what I'd like to say is the, the question was on behalf of a resident of Ditton Road called Marilyn Goldley, Golding. She um, has asked me to ask this question on her behalf because she couldn't speak. And what she would like to know is if, if this is going to come back, um, she would actually she's actually made a request. And I'm not saying whether I support the request or not. I'm purely a facilitator. But she would actually like the smooth cushions remo removed. She feels that they no longer perform the correct function anymore, bearing in mind that majority of modern cars have shock absorbers to take to, so they don't no longer have to slow down. And um, and so they just still go with the same speed over the speed cushions, which actually create more noise and more disturbance. And so if speed is considered to be the problem on Ditton Road, and, and, and I'm, I'm not saying whether it is or isn't, it's clearly people have mixed opinions, but she is asking whether it could be examined if those speed cushions can be removed. Thank you. Yeah, uh, that, thank you for that. I was actually, um, I've got, I think, um, from... Uh, from John Olding, <laughs> who's um, I was going to read that out. So, so, so you 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 saved me that, but it was saying the same thing, and it was about. So that's maybe one of the actions that we might want to add in and speak to 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 Eunice later. But um, thank you for that, um, Councillor Self. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with everything that Hilary said. Uh, as a ward councillor, um, I've been involved in it with this now for quite a long time. Um, we've probably, as ward as ward councillors, I think you've got to agree, Alison and Hillary, probably had an equal, I was going to say, that the most number of um, residents contact us about speeding in their road in Ditton. That may not be true. We, we also get uh, residents in Upper Brighton Road, but at, at the Upper Brighton Road section closer to Surbiton, I should say, between the five ways roundabout going down into Surbiton, that section as well, I, I won't I won't dwell on that now, but but uh, along with that, we've had we've had over the years uh, residents contacts about speeding in Ditton Road. And I thought the scheme that um, our highways engineers drew up was a good scheme, and it would have gone a long way to addressing the speed issue. Um, I'm not going to repeat everything that Hillary said, other than to say that there are residents in Ditton Road I know that are, were very keen for the scheme to be implemented and clearly you can see in front of you you've got the you've got the data there's there were a a, a large a much larger number of residents that did not want the scheme re, um, um, implemented so we're never we, we absolutely cannot please everybody um, so for me we've got to go with there is a clear consensus on this which is not to do anything. So because that's the clear consensus, I think on this, it's not as if it was, we're not back to a Brexit 52, 48. It's quite, it's quite clear actually on this. So we, we don't implement it and we leave it as it is. And if we do that, we've, I think we should resolve to not revisit speeding on Ditton Road with one caveat I'm going to make in a minute. Um, from an engineering point of view, probably for at least two years, certainly in this council term, because we can't keep coming back to the same thing and saying, well, you didn't like this, we're going to do this. Or it, it's, we've had a clear indication that residents want it left as it is, or at least the, 
the majority do. And I know that there's a significant mo majority, uh, sorry, significant minority that don't want that. But we have to go in this case with the majority. So I, I don't think I think we should say, look, we're not going to bring anything back within certainly in this council term. I would have said for two years, but whatever. Um, the only caveat I'd make is, and and maybe Eunice might come back on this, is is police speed cameras now this is not the we get we've got we've got we get from time to time the smiley face type um camera which obviously that's not enforcement but police enforcement speed cameras and we've looked into this particularly in the upper brighton road but you could have them in ditton road as well and and the police come and tell us that they won't they won't even consider putting a police speed camera up and this is where Eunice is going to correct me or say that I'm right. I'm not sure. I think it was something like there's got to be two fatalities or se very serious injuries from accidents within a one year period or something like that. And I suppose our view was we don't want to wait until there's a fatality or serious injury. We'd rather take action before. So I suppose my question to Eunice, is there any way at all we can coerce the police to put only uh, the, the council can't put? police uh the council can't put speed cameras up only the police can do that so that's a sort of question for units but don't spend too long on it if we can we can talk offline outside the meeting on this as well thanks thank you thank thank you for that uh council self um councillor white thank you i'd like to say well said hillary for everything that you've just said i have also read all the um, consultation responses and found them contradictory. Um, I think it would be really good to, when we can, actually have a sort of a road meeting. I hear what Malcolm's saying about we can't keep revisiting, but I think it would be really good to have the discussion. I also saw the reference to um, St Matthews Avenue and um, also picked up on um, a similar feeling and um, thought that, yeah, that was uh, a little bit beyond um, and thank you also for mentioning that feeding children is not part of this because we are doing um, everything we possibly can in the right area to do this um, I think it's um, yeah it's disappointing but um, we obviously have to do what uh, the consultation has uh, has suggested thank you uh, thank you um, and I've got the comment that you've made, Malcolm, to go to go back to so council self to go back to Eunice. So I haven't forgotten that that's something we'll need to to to, to refresh at the end. But I've got uh, Councillor Green. Do you want to make some comments and then we'll, we'll yeah round up? Thanks, thanks Chair. Um, I think it's a real shame, um, actually. Um, I think that quite often the people who might use a cycle lane aren't going to be the people that responded to the consultation because they don't live in. Ditton Road or whichever road it's on um, it's actually people who do want to go through from one end to the other um, and I think possibly we need to get better at asking the cyclists and the people who might use it um, I don't know how it's not easy but I think we need to get better at asking them what do they think as well uh, so actually I'd like this to go to a named vote please chair because I don't necessarily agree with the recommendation. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, you know, so there's been so, so well. There's a couple of things that you know have, have come forward. There's whether we we can remove the speed bumps. Um, I think that's going to be you know we'd have to look at um, so, and speeding is coming forward as something that in in the survey um, back is is an issue. I think if you remove the speed bumps and not do the other things, I'm not quite sure what that impact would be. Um, and so I'll, I'll look to you for that. And then there's the the comments that uh, that Councillor Self made about um, and uh, what other forms of enforcement or, or, or sort of speed awareness that we can do in in the on the street okay if i may chair i think uh unfortunately ditton road it has a lot of crossovers and because there is a lot of crossovers there is quite high demand for uh off street parking because unfortunately the ownership of car it is increase big houses you will find there is one two or three car for each property so they end up they want the space outside their house 
and my experience working in the council 25 years, a resident, they only think about outside their house and how it will impact on me. They don't unfortunately look to the big pictures, what the benefit and how that will benefit most people. And that is what is unfortunately the questionnaire does at the end. Every individual, they look at it from their own perspective. Oh, I don't want to lose a parking outside my house. So that is how, unfortunately, we come up with such an answer. But anyway, looking to the other question, the speed, the average speed at the moment, it's about 23.4 mile per hour. And that's with the speed cushions. So if you do move the speed cushions, that will increase. So it's like touch 22, what do you do? Because those, maybe it's not reducing all the traffic, the big vehicle, but it will be reducing quite high number of traffic. So that's why the mean or the average is less than 24 miles per hour. So just removing them, I'm afraid that is, if you're talking about speed, you will have a speed. Because that is, if any reduction being done, you're removing any physical measures to stop such an activity. That's the first answer. The second one, unfortunately, is placing CCTV blotting camera, they need for seriously or uh, killed uh, collision in order to allow it to happen. And that is our criteria. So if you don't have that, you won't have the camera. And the irony is, if you put that camera, we'll put it somewhere else. Because we reduce and we remove them, they told us to remove the camera. <laughs> so you can see the dilemma we are facing with this. So that's a bit. Unfortunately, here we we can't put camera because you have to have it meet the criteria. No criteria, no camera. And unfortunately, it's not something we need to look at. Which I think at the end of the day, if I fully understand the member's position and I based my recommendation, which based on the result of the survey. However, if members feel they want to take more strategic approach, it's their decision, their privilege to make it, to think out of the box. Okay, I've consulted you, I listened to you, but at the same time, I have to look with the big pictures. I have to look what that project will lead to how it will enhance and improve, but it's not for me to say. My recommendation is based on that, what I have in front of me. It wasn't easy because there is a lot of contradiction information for and against. And I'm happy to answer any further question. Okay. Is that um, all the questions? Anybody else got anything else they'd like to say? No. Well, um, on, on that basis, I think uh, we'll probably um, go to uh, a vote. I think um, Councillor Green has asked for a name named vote. So um, for, for me, um, it is uh, with regret that this is where we are. Um, it was consulted on. I think if it hadn't been um, during the uh, COVID uh, times, we probably would have, as ward councillors, we would have gone out and canvassed and and, 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 we, and who knows whether that would have um, made a difference to to the the outcome um, but we weren't in a position to be able to do that um, so therefore we have to to look at the evidence here there still is an issue with um uh, if 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 uh, there is still an issue with there appears to be an issue with speeding and and also with somebody has asked about um removing the speed bumps which and sadly i think would only just increase the speed so so i'm not sure um um that there, there's a, a, there are a, sort of a particularly uh, a way forward here other than to take on board what we've got and and to revisit um that this um as well councillors um, going forward. So um, on that basis, I'm going to put forward um, the, the recommendation. I don't know if anyone, um, anyone would like to second that. Councillor Self, second that. Um, and so will we go to a, a... Councillor Sumner? Sorry, it's me, Madam Chair. Um, I'm, I'm not quite committed because Councillor um, Green has said that she um, wants a name vote because she doesn't support the recommendation not to do anything. So if I vote 
against the recommendation but we're not but I, then i'm not voting for any of the other proposals because there's several other proposals that were put forward so i would just like confirmation about exactly what i am voting for or not voting for um because as i said the the recommendation is to do nothing councillor green has raised a very good point but Councillor Green isn't proposing one of the other alternatives as a an alternative vote. So could someone just clarify what we're voting for? Well, I, I would, as I, so I probably um, tried to sum it up by saying that I think it's not something that we can do tonight because there's a few different things and some of the suggestions, including the the comment that you you, you raised, um, the the question that had been given to you was to remove the speed bumps. Well, that's not um, we can't do do that because that would increase the speed. So I don't think we're in, in uh, got in enough information um, for this evening to to come up with anything. So so I, I was just saying that we should take it away as m myself, uh, Councillor Gann. And, and, and councillor self as, as ward councillors um, and, and consider again what we think um, in, in discussion with the officers as to what we think would be the, the right way forward. So that's what my suggestion is. So you'd either be you'd be voting for the recommendations and that would be including taking it away or or or, or you would be voting against that. That that's what I'm I'm proposing and has been seconded. So um so I think uh there's nothing else has come forward as specific um specifically for us to to vote on at the moment i don't think we're in possession of that uh that sort of uh, a strategy for that so um can we go to the vote on this please okay i'll call uh, members individually if they would indicate whether they're for against or abstaining on the recommendation okay so councillor abraham for the recommendation councillor bainan for oh. The Councillor Fashkov Sumner. Abstain. Councillor Folder Hughes. Four. Councillor Gander. Abstain. Councillor Green. Against. Councillor Holt. Four. Councillor Sharper. Four. Councillor Self. Four. Councillor Sweeney. Against. Councillor White. Abstain. And Councillor Jürgen Nathan. Please. Sorry, could you repeat that, Councillor Jürgen Nathan? Abstain. Okay. Okay, so that recommendation is passed by six votes to two with four abstentions. Okay, thank, thank you, Martin. Um, so we go on to, to the um, last item um, on the agenda this evening is item 10, and it's uh, the work programme. Um, I, uh, it is just um, we also felt that we had to have a work program to work forwards. A lot of things that um, are, are on there, and and we would want to to go forward and, and have some um, dates attached to it. But it was just to to have uh, the work program there. Um, I don't know if there's any questions anyone has at the the moment, um, or we we just uh, agree the work program. I can't see anybody saying anything, so we just agree the work program, and 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 we'll bring that back at, at each committee uh, as it gets updated. Um, the final item for this evening is um, there uh, to say that there are no other urgent items or exempt business, and I close the meeting at twenty three oh eight. Thank you very much, everybody. Please welcome to a late show. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Not quite Thank sure you. what happened there. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bye. Thank you, Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Bye.